Are we live? It's alive! And uh, here we are at Chinrata. Good evening and welcome to the Dangus. Hold well, on, let me get some Tokoso in the background here. That's right. Got some Tokoso. We're here at Shinrata Desra. Some weird shit going on at Shinrata right now. Namely, um, this poor little bugger. Seems to be, uh, not knowing what to do with himself. David Stumps. What are you doing, David? What's wrong, David? He's got himself wanted for, I think, loitering. And, uh, people are shooting at him. He's not having a good day. He's stuck. Maybe we can help David Stubbs get out of stuff. Let's do a good deed. Hey, David. I'm helping. Oh, no, I'm going to fight. Hey, that did not help. Ship-to-ship -ship collisions will not be tolerated. Although, I'm surprised that Shinrata Desra that, like... This is the level of security. You got one, like... What is that? You got a viper protecting the universe. Oh, 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 oh! Whoa, 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 We're banding. We're banding. David, what are you doing? By the way, 07 to go so. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, we are, uh, it is Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. And so today, the theme is actually going to be, uh, we're going to create a turducken. We're going to create the most, well, unfortunately, there's no turkey in this game. Uh, hold on. Let me just land the dog because i got to concentrate. This is very difficult. Just a little bit of a slot, no big deal. And, uh, hurt. Caution, deploy landing gear. Oh, right, landing gear, sure. Um, so yeah, today, uh, sorry for starting up a little bit late. Um, although, well, we're not late, I'm early. Um, yeah, I figured, well, it'd be kind of fun to just, we'll fly around the bubble and collect some air guns that we'll put together a turkey meal for Canadian Thanksgiving. If I can pay out my minds. And then uh, we'll try and find someone randomly in the galaxy to give a turkey dinner to, dinner to of our own concoction. Uh, okay. So what ship shall I use for this turkey turkey uh, turkey circuit? Maybe a keelback. Keelback could be a good. Yeah, that's a nice little hauler ship. Maybe it has an extra seat in it now. Let's see. By the way, the Courier flew with that last week. Oh my god, I love it. It's amazing. Courier is definitely uh, something I need to fly more. But how are you guys doing? What do you get? I, I know the Americans have their Thanksgiving in November, and I don't know, the rest of the world doesn't have Thanksgiving. That thing where they came over and spread smallpox, and then they're like, let's make it a holiday. <laughs> let's see here. We are in the keelback, and as you can see, yeah, there is a there is an extra seat. Isn't that lovely? Anyway, let's just uh, go into outfitting. Let's make sure that we're all set for what we're trying to do. Uh, we probably don't need weapons. Oh, why did I store that? That's just wasting space. Get rid of these one app fault pulse lasers, and then you gotta wait for it to. They really need to, like, make this animation thing happen simultaneously. It is, well, it's okay, it's Thanksgiving in Canada, so this is for Space Canadians, basically. Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. This is a stock heel bag, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh. Well, we might want to reconsider. Hold on. <laughs> I, just, I need something with jump range. Uh, let's see here. So many options, though. Could do an AFSP scout. That is pretty engineered. Don't. Jerry's not here. He's stuck on Earth in 1989. Maybe a Type 7. Although I think this one is combat spec for for reasons. Could always go with the, the classic Dangatron 9000. Um, you know what? I kind of think this is probably the, the best one. The Ask Scout, the best ship in the game. Oh, hold on. Is the music too loud? Hold on. Turn down a notch. That's probably better. I don't know. Maybe you tell me. You tell me if it's better. <laughs> I always have issues with the mixing. Oh no, you can stay loot. Hey, you, you, everyone is a space Canadian, honorably. Uh, there are no more borders in space. Everyone is a Canadian, today. Everyone is welcome to eat turkey. So yeah, as you can see, I've got secret missiles and burst lasers on this ASP scout. Manifest scanner, heat sink launcher, all this lovely A-rated engineered 
garbage. I don't know why I did this to an ask scout, but... Uh, okay, so we will want cargo space. We will want a uh, fuel scoop. Collector limpet. I think we need that. Hold on, is it engineered? No. Bye-bye. I sell you. What we will want, though, is an FSD interdictor because... <laughs> Eventually, what we're going to want to do is, uh, once we've assembled our meal, we're going to want to find someone that we can give a meal to. I'm going to get rid of Super Cruise Assist. And we'll use some extra cargo space. Why not anti-corrosion? Oh wait, no, I'm not going to put that mask out. Then I'll forget about it. Those things are hard to come by, those damn corrosion racks. So, how much cargo space do I have? Where is the thing that tells me at the bottom? Uh, boo, 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 boo. 30. Hmm. That should be enough for a meal. Yeah, we're, get, we're going rare goods trading, so... It's, uh... You don't really need to worry about volume of combat. Let's just see here. Any important messages? No, the Askays are still appreciative of the combat help that we gave them. Okay, so... Hold on, where did I put these damn systems? One second. I kind of like... Okay, so I was a little bit late uh, getting onto this. I had, like, a weird swollen eye this morning. Um, it was basically, like, so I went on a date last night, and then, uh, uh, she had a cat, and I'm allergic to cats, and my fucking eye, uh, has swollen up to the size of, like, a baseball. <laughs> so, the cat, cat kind of, uh, ruined all those plans. Um, anyway, so, where are we going? We're going to Malachi, Malachi first. Malachi. And we'll see what rare goods we have there. I put together a list of ingredients, I guess you could say. Uh, what is my jump range, by the way? Is it is it decent? Uh, boom, 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 boom. Thirty-five. Oh yeah, that is that is impressive. Yeah, scout ain't nothing to play with. All right, let's let's head out with with haste. Then again, the ass scout, you know, looks just like an ass from the inside, but from the behind. Tell it's gonna quit. There we go. I mean, you know, it's not an ugly ship. It's just kind of useless. But I do love the the sort of small engine there. Oops. And the maneuverability is wonderful. We're gonna hit the wall. Ouch. Okay. Seventy-two. Wow. That's, that's a lot of damage. We're okay, we're okay. Just carry on. Don't worry. Don't don't look at me. Pay no attention to the lack of shields and all. We'll, we'll be able to fix that when we get to the next place. <laughs> Already off to a good start. <clears throat> yeah, it was just like one of those things where it's just like, yeah, okay, I should come back to my place or whatever. And it's like, literally, okay, like it was the most aggressively affectionate cat and just wanted to rub against me and then, uh, I started swelling up. I started like raspy breathing. And I'm just like, I, uh, yeah, there's not gonna be a second date because uh, I'm like extremely allergic to your cat. I have cat allergies and they're very mild for the most part. Um, I have a friend who has like three cats, go over to his house. Maybe a couple hours later, my eye will pop up a little bit, but oh my god, it was like I had like the most severe allergic reaction. And I knew it was not meant to be. It's like, certainly. <laughs> Let's be the cat, really. <laughs> it's a weird, awkward situation, though. But it's just like, yeah, I'm like sitting there, and my, I literally, like, my eyes puffing. I go and look in the mirror. Uh, like, I go to the bathroom, I look in the mirror, and it looks like my face, uh, like, one side of my face just like, sagged. It looked like I had a stroke. It was absolutely insane. Just, you know, it's weird, because with allergies, like, some cats, I guess, are more allergy um, dependent than others. Or allergy emitting. What up, Zakao? But yeah, like, I, I love cats. I love being around them, but, uh, some of them just, man, they will, uh, they will, they will destroy my face. Uh, but yeah, if you want to wing up, uh, send me a wing invite. I have an open, I think. Okay, so the first place we're going is Mulachi Clark Terminal. Just be. Uh, please don't tell me it's like. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> okay, what are we? 
Maybe we don't need Mulachi Giant Fungus. I don't think, yeah, you know what? We don't need mushrooms. We don't need mushrooms. <laughs> I'm not going freaking that far. We're gonna go ahead to the next one. Teractor. Maybe we'll get the mushrooms at the end if we still, if we're doing good time. And yeah, this is gonna take us all over the bubble. I did another root planner. Uh, Short-haired cats have stronger stuff, apparently boring fact. It's usually the saliva on their fur. That's interesting. It's the saliva. Yeah, I don't know. This one is like a very powerful, aggressive uh, cat. Very strong cat, too. Yeah, okay. I, th I know the, the, the ass scout I put French, French lady on. Um, yeah, I guess that's in character for Canadian. We're going to celebrate some little bilingualism here in on Canadian Space Deck giving. Sure. That, that was intentional. I said all of sorts of weird voices in every different ship. <laughs> There's like, every once in a while I'll jump into a, a ship I haven't flown in a while, and it's like, oh, this one's German. How oh, nice. I am starting to work on my next um, Tengus episode. I know it's been a while since I put out like a proper episode. Usually I would kind of do these things on Saturdays, but with the, uh, the streaming, it's like, you know, it's kind of been one or the other. But, uh... Definitely uh, working on the next on the next era, the next chapter. There we go. Got to post on the wing. Let's see if I can send Dark Heavy as well an invite. If he's online. Uh, you use Brazilian. I like the sound of the Brazilian. Spanish is a very nice sounding language. Is Dark Heavy there? Yeah, we'll send you. Uh, we'll invite you to the team, Dark Heavy. Who else is online? Let's see here. Got Sergeant Car 34 and Commander 27 Dude in ED Beyond. This is still in the old school. I really love how Dark Heavy killed you. I love the uh, this contact panel where you can kind of see like who you've been in the system with. It can be very useful if you see a hollow pip and then just pop over here. And if you see Harry Potter, then you know it's time to run. I don't even know if that guy's still. Uh, I think he got banned. I don't know if he ever got back. Uh, Portuguese for a while though. The Portuguese, that's right, Brazilian would be Portuguese in Spanish. Uh, you love the SF FSD engagement, although you don't know what she says. I'm assuming it's probably friendship drive charging. Maybe. <laughs> Just a lucky guess. Can you imagine, though, if in different languages they're, like, revealing the location of rocks and all sorts of different stuff? Alright, so we're going to Tranquility here. Of course, these all have very interesting things here. Okay, thankfully that's not 500,000 light years away. And here uh, at the Terraktor system, we'll be picking up some Terrax Spice. The Terrax Spice will, of course, be a key ingredient in making sure that uh, our Turducken, our Turductopus, <laughs> Turductopus, uh, it looks uh, looks good. Now, I did scour through the, the commodities list, and unfortunately, there's no like straight up like uh, space turkey. But the word after the countdown, it's like, what, three, two, one. And then it says something. Uh, too bad about your fate, man, but I have two tickets to see a nice Broadway show. Want to come to the see cats with me? <laughs> uh, you don't need to be allergic to not want to see cats, I think. <laughs> like, it's, uh, I don't think I would go see cats. I haven't even seen the movie. I'm like, I, I would only see the butthole cut. If they release cat, the butthole cut, then I will watch it. But if there's no butthole, then I have no reason to go watch it. Oh yeah, this is still a glitch where you can't see your interdictor meter. Whatever they call it. That's fine. Don't need to know where I'm going to get where I need to go. Come on. Come on. There we go. That might be an issue with a, if, a, if a player hits you, because those player interdictions, man... The NPCs just don't know how to interdict. Someone needs to teach them. Maybe Bradford should do a, a tutorial for NPCs. I don't know about that. <laughs> but alright, we're going to do Tranquility. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it, you know, I'll tell you, even though um, there's no space turkey uh, or turkey equivalent in the commodity market, there are quite a lot of interesting rare commodities to be found, and 
you know, if you just stumble upon a rare commodity or if you're going out doing rare goods trading, I highly encourage you, read the descriptions of what the rare commodity is, because some of them, some of them are pretty funny. <laughs> We're going to get to a couple interesting ones uh, as we go through. All right. Coming in on Tranquility. Is it spelt correctly? Does, does Tranquility usually have two L's? I don't know why, but it's looking weird to me. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Freaking cats. Is that Andrew Lloyd Webber or something like that? I like the Phantom of the Opera. I've never seen that as a kid. Ooh, what a pretty station. Okay, where's the entrance? I think it's there. Let me in, let me in. No, the Ascode, I'll tell you, it's not a bad, um, it's not as bad as everyone says it to be. Very maneuverable ship, very quick, quick and spry. Makes you feel like a, like a young whippersnapper. Right, and into the most love we go. I like the sultry undertones in this lovely station. Okay, where's that event 30? There you are. Okay, landing gear down. I will remember this time. Slide it here. You see that maneuver? Oh, 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 okay. You see that maneuver? <laughs> Honestly, all these years I still haven't really got a good handle on docking. It depends on how much attention I'm giving to it. You're buying last year if it's on sale. Would there be a sale on Thanksgiving? Well, I don't know. Maybe American Thanksgiving. No one seems to care about Canadian Thanksgiving. Uh, I always like to see what's going on here. Mercenary facilities, if you're going to pay off your bounties. I personally like to collect my bounties and keep them as trophies of my accomplishments. Alright, and here we go. Tarek Spice. So, made from crushed beetles. This mild euphoric drug has a number of side effects, including the turning, turning the whites of attic eyes a subtle shade of green. Widely illegal, but favored in many anarchic systems, anarchic systems, where the green eyes are seen as a badge of an extreme lifestyle. This rare good is illegal in all imperial markets except prison colony, allied feudal, and theocracy markets, and independent dictatorship markets. Oh, hold on. Is the music getting loud again? I'll just try to make myself louder. Hold on. I uh, will put my mic... Oh, you know why? Because I had the sliders on. Oh, audio mixing. I'm terrible at it. Uh, sorry, where was I? Okay, so this is a rare good is legal. Uh, please note if the market's controlled. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So this is illegal, but why not? Let's just get some illegal spices. I think we'll just go with three. We just need probably three spices to make... This is just an add-on for the meal, but um, there will be more ingredients. Okay, where's the next place? Uh, we are at Territory. Next place is 47 Setai. Yeah, please do let me know, uh, mixing, because, like, yeah, I, I woke up, my face was all puffy, it took me a while to kind of, I was actually up till, like, four in the morning last night, just because when I got home, I was like, right, 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 and, uh, kind of got caught up in that, and so I woke up really late, face puffy, it's like, oh no, and I kind of put this stream together in, like, a very short amount of time, so there might be some mixing issues. If so, let me know. If you can't hear me, well... Consider yourself one of the privileged few. Alright. Off to 47 Setai. It's always good to boost out the mail slot. Show everyone you're a real pilot. <laughs> Kasim Shipa. That's an interesting system. So we have our spice. What is the next, what are, what are we getting at uh, 47 C tie? That is, oh, CT rabbits, of course, because, you know, maybe if you can't get turkey, at least you get some game. We're gonna get some nice little rabbit stew going on. That's part of our Thanksgiving meal. I don't know if there's a rule on like what you gotta eat during Thanksgiving. You, you know, it's like, I guess like turkey's the most obvious. Some people do ham. Steamed ham or steamed clams. <laughs> I 
fucking love the Steam Dam thing from The Simpsons. Skinner! Uh, no worry, you're only running half a brain as well. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm very, uh, it's weird because like I woke up and my eyes still puffy. It looks like I got a black eye, which I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. I should just tell everyone I got in a fight. But, um, yeah, severe allergic reaction, which I have not had in a while. I guess it's like, it's like, you know, different, different cats emit different pussy particles, um, or whatever the hell it is. The dander. Tom's saying it's their saliva. I guess, yeah, because they lick themselves all the time. So I, I, I remember looking out from my balcony and there's like a cat that goes around in the alley behind my house and uh, just sits there and licks itself all day. Must be nice. Oh, who we got here? We got Takoso. Uh, so where do we go at 47 Setai? It is the Kaufmanis Hub. And of course, you know, even if you're not celebrating your, your Thanksgiving here, you can see I'm already like wanted in some of these places. I don't know if that's because of my cargo. Who's that? Blue Giant. It's a tourist beacon. Uh, what is this place? Did I miss it? Is it gonna be really far? Oh no! <laughs> it's also far. Well, some things are worth making the trip for. I want that rabbit stew, so yeah. Half a million light seconds away. This will be a little bit of a journey. Well, that's cool. We can get some cool camera angle shots. Yeah, of course, many of the uh, the rare goods are um, located in places that, you know, you have to kind of strive to get to them. Not all of them. It's part of the appeal, though. You're from Albany, and you've never heard that? What, you, what, what was I saying? I don't know. There's a delay. And I forget what I say half the time. Once it's left the brain... It's gone. It's it's out there in the world. It does not need to be remembered. The way I like to think is my brain has very high processing power, but very low RAM. I can figure figure things out very quickly, but then immediately forget what the hell I did. Look at that chunky back, though. I do love the back of the ass scout. Although, where do you get... There's no door on this one. Normally, like, there's a door there and then two engines on the side. This one just has two big engines. And, of course, the orange circles, which look like honeycombs, and I just want to eat them. I guess there's no back door on the Ask Scout. The Ask Scout does not take a commander in the back. So where do you get in the ship? That's a good question. Like, maybe through the cargo hatch? Or you know what, this probably this is probably a fold-out staircase right here. May lower unexpectedly. Funk. That's probably what it is. So yeah, this'll be a while to get here. I kind of, yeah, did not plan this out well enough to realize. But you know what? Some rare goods are worth the trip. It's not going to take an hour and a half. You're going to get faster and faster. Am I going maximum speed? Tips to engines. Does that matter in Super Cruise? I don't know. But how, are, how is everyone else's going? This is a long weekend here in Canada. We, of course, have Thanksgiving. Uh, a, month, a whole month before the Americans. The Americans have theirs in November and a Black Friday to go with it. Um, whereas we Canadians, we, we you know, um, it's colder up here. We got to get our fall shit done a month before you guys, because you know, by by November it's going to be too cold to eat turkey. You've never had turkey or a Thanksgiving meal for that matter. What's it like? Um, well, I guess it depends. I've, I've got a pretty small family, but I've, you know, dated ladies that um, have had large families. But people getting together usually it's a big feast. You know, you got a big turkey there. Usually it's overcooked and really dry. Um, in typical ingredients might include cranberries, uh, mashed potatoes, uh, some sort of vegetable creature, maybe some sautéed mushrooms, uh, and of course, uh, at the end of the meal, pumpkin pie. And some people, you know, if they don't like turkey, they'll have a, a ham, a steamed ham, if you will. Um, it's a, you know, uh, let me put it this way. Uh, you go to Thanksgiving dinner, usually what happens is after dinner you go into a food coma because you ate a lot of food. So it's, just, you know, it's just a just a feast. A feast of meat and potato and pumpkin pie. That is my, that is, I have a pumpkin pie in my freezer right now. And it's like every day I, th I think about eating it. It's my favorite shit. It's kind of interesting that like, yeah, like you eat pumpkins around this time of year, but like we don't hear about pumpkins outside of October. This is not to be discussed. They are forbidden fruit. What is a pumpkin? A pumpkin is a vegetable. No, it's, I guess it's like a gourd 
part of the gourd family? Are gourds vegetables? Are they legumes? What is a gourd? Is this really gonna... This is not gonna take 25 minutes. My god, this is far. Well, there you go. A self-licking cat. You have no idea how jealous I am. <laughs> I mean, all cats have that inherent ability to lick themselves. I mean, it's kind of gross, though, when you see a cat licking its bum wall, and then it wants to come, like, lick your hand, and it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you hate pumpkin. Oh, no. Do you hate the, the just the, the color and shape and consistency or the attitude of the pumpkin? Or is it like you hate the taste of pumpkin? Because I like pumpkin pie, and I like pumpkin spice muffins. I like that stuff. You can't stand pumpkin pie. What? What? It's travesty. I love all pies. There's not a pie that you could keep me away from. Even key lime pie, I'll have a slice of that. But my favorite pie is pecan pie. Pecan pie is a, a devilish treat. It's something that you know you got to be very careful around. Otherwise, you're gonna uh, you're gonna gain a lot of weight. <laughs> uh, let me just see here. Where is the? Do, 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 do. I'm just looking at my list of things. Oh, hold on. I don't think I put that system in my root planner. Okay, maybe we'll go there next. Una momento, I'm just gonna put something in my... I, I use the Down to Earth Astronomy Commander's Toolbox Root Planner. It's really great for when you are trying to... Um, hold on. Baira Kocha. It's great when you, you are trying to um, <clears throat> do like a bunch of... Uh, uh, do a bunch of systems in one go. And find the, the sort of the, the the most efficient route between them, which makes sense that, that if Down to Earth Astronomy did this, it makes perfect sense. He's very efficient. Um, yeah, key lime is epic. It's like key lime. Like I could have one slice of that, but more than that, I think I'll I think I'll um, my teeth will fall out. You're just a weird Asian immigrant living off some remote village who hates talking to humans and pumpkin pie. <laughs> I can understand, though, how people don't like pumpkin pie. Uh, it is, like, a different consistency, right? I think, like, there's two things in food. There's, like, flavor, and then there's, like, texture and consistency. And there are some things I love the flavor of, but cannot stand the, uh, the texture of it. If it's too mushy. I don't like mushy food. Except mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes are not mushed. They're mashed. So they're okay. But if you put too much butter on them, or too much gravy... They become mushy, and it's just like potato soup. You don't want to eat that. What's wrong with you? Uh, no non-American that I know likes pumpkin pie. Really? So you think it's like it's like a well, I'm Canadian, so American Canadian. It's like a North American thing. That's interesting. I mean, maybe it is an acquired taste. Pumpkin is the kind of sweet you don't like. Hmm. See, I don't think it's like inherently sweet though. I think on pumpkin pie, they probably just put pumpkin and like. Two two thousand ounces of sugar in there. And Zakao, you're saying you cook your own food, mostly just whatever vegetables that are cheap that day and down with rice. I rarely eat meat. Yeah, I mean cheap veggies and cooking, that's that's healthy for you. Rice is always good, love rice. I like meat though. I know it's like, you know, factory farms and you know it's, it's all that sort of stuff, but uh, I don't think I could ever become a vegetarian. Chicken's good, beef is good, steak is good. And, you know, it's like, you, you know, I've met cows and chickens and stuff, and they're very nice creatures. And, you know, I definitely, like, um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, it's like, it's like I don't want to eat you because I'm a murderer, but you really taste good. And, um, you know, I respect you when I'm eating you. <laughs> respect the meat. But, uh, you know, hey, if you're a vegetarian, all the power to you. If you're vegan, then I don't want to know, because you can just... Because <laughs> that's the thing with vegans, is they have to let everyone know that they're vegan. I do have a vegan friend, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll, he's a buddy of mine that we go to a lot of concerts together. And it's like, sometimes we'll grab, uh, grab a meal before the concert, and it's always like, he has to go to a vegan place, so... Every once in a while, I have to go to these vegan places with him and have it. And it's, you know, to be honest, it's not bad. I had, like, a burger that was made out of jackfruit... Which I'm like, I don't even know what the hell jackfruit is, but how is that a meat replacement? And it's not really a re meat replacement, but it was a damn tasty burger. 
So I'm like, I'd eat that again. You eat pumpkin grilled as a soup. Damn. Grilled pumpkin. I've never actually had that. See, uh, I, I've never eaten, I think, like, just raw pumpkin. Well, not raw, but, like, you know, just pumpkin. Like, it's either pumpkin pie or pumpkin pumpkin spice latte or uh, pumpkin spice muffin. It's usually pumpkin spice something. But I've never just, like, eaten pumpkin. That would be interesting. I think uh, next weekend I'm doing, uh, I'm going to a bonfire with some friends. It's just like a backyard. We're going to, a little fire pit. It's not really a bonfire, I guess. Because it's because we don't make enough fire to qualify. But um, maybe I should just get a pumpkin and we'll just roast grilled pumpkin on the fire. Pumpkin soup sounds interesting, though, to me. You like potato? Makes a good stir fry? Oh, yeah, potatoes. I'll eat a potato any day. You're not vegetarian, you're just weak Asian stomach is just not used to a meaty diet. Well, fair enough. I, yeah, I, I know some people that can't eat meat because of um, reactions or whatever. And it's like, to, to me, that, that sucks. It takes out a whole food group. But, you know, I think it would have really sucked to be having those kind of, like, dietary needs 100 years ago, right? Like, now there's so many options for people who don't eat meat. You just... A lot of restaurants are now doing alternative meat or beyond beef and stuff like that. So at least there's um, at least there's like more accommodation for people that have like restrictive diets. I've known some people too that have like celiac um, or you know uh, digestive issues or whatever. Very restrictive diet, like no carbs, no gluten. And I just can't, I'm like constantly like I don't know how how you do it, man or lady. Um, it's just, like, to me, like, if I had to be on a diet where I couldn't eat bread, uh, I, I don't know. What would I do? I'd go, uh, I'd go nuts. I, or I'd just eat that stuff and then have stomach aches all the time. <laughs> uh, you find cooking a bit messy. Cooking meat a bit messy. Well, I'll tell you what changed my life is a sous vide machine. It's like a little, so it's basically like, think of a plastic tub and you fill it with water and then you stick this instrument in it that heats the water up to a specific temperature. And then let's say you take like a chicken breast, you put some salt and pepper and spices on it and a lemon and aromatics, uh, ar aromatics like a rosemary or whatever. You dump it into a sealable plastic bag. You um, push all the air out of it and just let it sit in the water heating for two hours. Then you just take it out, put it on the fire pan, uh, frying the fire pan the frying pan, let it uh, just sear it, and then it's good to eat. And it cooks it perfectly, and it's so juicy, and it makes everything so easy. Um, if you don't know sous vide cooking, it's just the super easiest thing. It is literally made cooking idiot proof. I can't, cause like I would cook chicken often, and then, oh, it's like a little pink on the inside. I don't know if I can eat it. But uh, sous vide, man, that's the, that's, that's where it's at. Um, I get so hungry talking about this. Um, you also buy some pork mince or chicken breast cheap. Yeah, that, those are good. Um, uh, chicken breasts are awesome. You never understood why re meat replacement is branded as meat. Yeah, like, should it just be like a... Like, I guess, like, the problem is if you call it a veggie burger, they're all, eh, I don't know. Veggie burgers aren't good. They had a bad rap for a long time, because I don't know. What was it before? Soil and green? I'm not really sure, but... Uh, now that they call them Beyond Beef, I think it is, like, more appealing. I don't know. Maybe it's just, I think it's just, like, Veggie Burgers had a bad raf. Oh, hold on. What's this? Dark Heavy saying, got some Yasso Condi leaf from Yasso Condi, Wheeler Market. Interesting. Okay. We'll throw that in the mix. Well, I want to know what the description for that is. Uh, what is it going to pair with? Is it going to pair with wine? Like, do you put the leaf in, like, a bay leaf in, in with the turkey? Um... Oh, is like how you're lactose intolerant and you hate cheese and yogurt. Well, I assume if you're lactose intolerant, you would definitely hate cheese and yogurt. I love yogurt. Can't live without cheese. Um, I think I'm a little bit lactose intolerant because I always feel sick after, you know, drinking a lot of milk and stuff, but I still do it. <laughs> I don't drink that much milk anymore. In Canada, by the way, we have bags of milk. I'm not going to explain that. Google it for yourself. But I know that, that people freak out when they hear about Canadian milk bags. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. Um, Ray, you're saying that you eat, uh, by the way, I eat EG Impossible Burger, etc. can taste great, but when it comes, to, it comes down to the texture. Yeah, that's what I was talking about before, where it's like you have like taste and texture. And I think the Beyond Meat, like 
It tastes great, but maybe the texture's off. It's different. Uh, and Tocoso, you cut out beef just the worst environmentally. Yeah, it is. And I agree with that. I just can't do it. <laughs> I like it too much. But I'm glad that other people are doing it because that, you know, that's probably the, probably the direction to go in. Like, eventually, we're all going to be eating food patties made out of, like, you know, uh, millions of mosquitoes just mushed into a, a protein vat and spat out as, like, manufactured food. And hey, when we get there, if it tastes like a burger and it feels like a burger, then I'd eat it. Um, that's probably where we're going to go. But, um, yeah, for right now, it is definitely, like, like there's a lot of, um, you know, cruelty and abuse and environmental the unstewardship or you know these kind of factory beef farms just a bunch of farting cows uh that uh really you know it's a, it's a sad thing but uh well i still eat them uh is that how you're saying one glass of milk fresh or not you're in for a landslide yeah i i, I feel that and ray you'd suffer if you can't eat cheese yeah cheese just makes everything better i love it it's like the perfect add-on you can put it on anything um, although there is a German guy working to make cow farts less, have less emissions. Okay, please explain to me how he's planning to do that. Is it like 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 a, an exhaust pipe that you stick on the cow's anus? Or are they like engineering the cow's genetics to have sweeter farts? Or is it just the diet thing? Like just, okay, if we feed the cow soylent green, the farts are not as methane producing. I'd like to know how you engineer a cow. <laughs> uh, you had less beef last year than a McDonald's Royale. Wow, that's not a lot of beef. But by Royale, do you mean the uh, the quarter pounder or the Royale with cheese? That's what they call it in Europe, the Royale. Uh, you're learning Arduino, so hopefully you can jury wig it for yourself. I don't know what Arduino is. Is that another type of cooking? Uh, racist to cook, so I hear you. Not not the farts. <laughs> Still, from a local farm, I could justify beef. Yeah, and that's, that, you know, it's like, like, let me put it this way. It's like, it's not, like, here's the thing. I live over the dumpster. I, that sounds weird, but, like, I, from my balcony, I can see the dumpsters. There are the, the garbage dumpsters and the recycling dumpsters. The garbage truck comes, and guess what? All four bins, garbage and recycling, goes into the same truck. Recycling, oh, yeah, you should recycle. Reduce, reuse, recycle. I believe in those things. However, however... No individual will ever make a difference. And it's all like a fallacy given by the corporations to make people seem responsible. Like, oh, the, the world is, is uh, dying and, and uh, we're poisoning our planet because, you know, people don't recycle. But in reality, it's the structure of society. It's the corporations that can make the biggest difference. Like at the factory farm. Oh, God damn it. Hold on. Hold on. This guy heard me ranting and he's like, enough of your uh, blaming corporations for all the world problems. But seriously, dude. Why you why you interdict me all the way out here? This guy traveled all the way, almost 500,000 light years, just to try and get my measly bounties. What a champ. But you know, I think the biggest change needs, it's like, it's like rather than recycle, rather than cut beef out of your life, like change your habits, support the local farms, um, go against the corporations that are the major polluters or the factory farms and whatnot. Because even if you change your habits, it won't change the majority, right? So it's like, there needs to be like, like big shifts from the top, right? Like society is structured where, you know, you're, you're one man fighting against a, a, a river of, of salmon swimming against you, you know? That's how I feel anyway. It's, it's uh, like, I'd rather put the effort into making the, the companies that produce the goods. It's like, if I have to pay a dollar more for a burger and the cow gets, you know, a nice pot every once in a while and gets to hang out in a field instead of like a dark barn, I will gladly pay that as a consumer until it becomes unaffordable and then the economy collapses. But hey, you know, you gotta pick your battles. Um, <laughs> I'm ranting. Uh, that machine slow cooking under 100. Okay, yeah, yeah, slow cooking, okay. Yeah, I, I, I honestly like, I like the idea too that you just, you throw your food in a bag and then just like leave it for four hours and then you can come back and whip it up quickly and it's perfect. Can't screw it up. Yeah, so condi leaf, a native plant that exhibits similar properties to tobacco, but without the harmful effects. No way. That's pretty cool. Discovered through observing its effect on the local fauna. The local fauna? What are they? They land on the on that planet, and they're like, hey, look, there's a, an alien, alien monkey. Hey, look, he's smoking that plant. 
But hey, look, he's he doesn't have a doesn't have like all the terrible side effects of, of smoking. I mean, that would be quite a discovery. If someone could create a, a cigarette that had no side effects, smoking could be popular and cool again. <laughs> Do you like double double? Okay, so like that's so Canadian. I love that you referenced that. I used to drink my coffee double double. Um, I can't do it anymore. I drink my coffee black now. I don't have any cream, any sugar in it. Um, and I look back at myself and go, that double double was disgusting. Like it was just like this coagulated mess of thick, chunky coffee. Um, I used to drink a double double though, and that is the thing. You go to you, Tim Hortons in Canada and you say, hey, can I have a medium double double? And they go, yeah, here's your coffee with two cream, two sugar, right? They know what it means. You go to a Tim Hortons in the United States because now they're starting to spread because we're slowly infiltrating them and terraforming the United States to absorb them into our own um, Canadian empire. But you go to the States and you ask for a double-double and they look at you and go, what? Sorry, what do you want? And it's like, that's two cream, two sugar. Like, how do you not know double-double? <laughs> uh, you can buy cat food made from insects already as cats eat a lot of meat every day. Well, that's cool. See, look, I, I told you, there's a lot of protein in bugs. They're easy to breed. That's going to be the future. They're going to, we're going to be eating bugs for protein. Uh, he is working to change the gut biome to have different bacteria. So it does create... So basically, he's looking at genetically engineering the cow to fart differently. I mean, can we do that with humans too? Could I engineer myself to not fart or to have like sweet smelling farts that smell like um, lavender? <laughs> can you imagine? What if... Okay, what if we lived in a world where human farts smelled good? Where, like, you would smell something on the side. Hmm, what is that potpourri? Mm. You're following the scent, and then it's just coming from some, you know, old cranky dude's anus. Can you imagine, though, if farts smelled good, what kind of world would we live in? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I can't get over that. That's weird. Collecting the CH4 and making collectible fuel cells floating in orbit. You don't... Do you... Do you... Don't need a fuel scoop. What? Collecting the CH4 and make collectible fuel cells floating in orbit. What? That's crazy. I don't, I, I don't know how that would work. By the way, this is a very... Oop, hold on. I accidentally minimized. Hold on. What a pretty planet. That's a nice, lovely Earth-like. One thing I was... I, you know, this is... I know they recently did a, a, a contest where it was like, yeah, if you find an Earth-like world, you get your name in the game. I wanted to do it, didn't really have enough time, and uh, ended up uh, just not doing it. But my my evil sinister plot that I was going to do for that was just to go to Seoul, and then uh, take a picture of Earth, and then submit that, and maybe get a tourist beacon in Seoul. I don't think that would happen, but I'm like, maybe no one else is trying it, and they'll be amused by it. Maybe, but then I just didn't get around to it. All right, so here we are at Kaufman's Hub. What a lovely station with three rings. Two small rings, one big ring. Took a while to get here, but it's all worth it for some seti rabbits, as long as we don't smash into the ring and kill ourselves. That would be horrible. Uh, well, let me get landed and then I will catch up on the chat. I have the chat in like a different monitor, so if I try to read the chat while I'm docking, I will smash it to a wall. Landing pad 11. Oh, look at that. It's right there ready for me. And... Perfect. Ish. Okay. Let me just catch up on the chat here. So, Arduino is a microcontroller board that is a huge community. I'm going to check that out after, because, like, I'm now really into, like, alternative cooking methods and, like, things that make cooking easier. Uh, you would love to smoke if it was good for you. I used to be able to lose weight just by smoking loads harder as you get old. Huh, uh, that would be <laughs> a poor way. Yeah, like lose weight through uh, smoking, or you could lose weight by chopping off your arm, technically. It's just, you know, is it good for you? That's <laughs> the question, right? I am a heavy smoker. I'm trying to quit. Well, I'm trying to want to quit. I'm trying to, like, be motivated to quit. Because <laughs> I don't really want to quit, but I should. Um, and Dark Heavy says, I bet the stream lasts three hours. We don't get to give anything away. ED is that hard. We should be able to do it. We should be able. I think we'll. The problem, I think, we'll be finding someone in open to uh, Thanksgiving the ties. Uh, double double. Oh, thought about a burger. It's two patties. Or sorry, sorry, sorry. Two paddles of patties. T 
times two cheese at In-N-Out Burger. Mmm. Mmm. In-N-Out. I'm so upset that we don't have that in Canada. I would love to eat In-N-Out. Although, Shake Shack would be, if I had to pick one or the other, I would want Shake Shack. Shake Shack is amazing. Um, out of shiitake, tofu, shallot, super bouillon, wheat gluten, and ground peanuts. Mmm. I'd eat that. Isn't there a Japanese thing where poo smells like strawberry and changed to the color purple? What? What? I mean, I can see the Japanese doing that. They're very innovative. <laughs> uh, you only have three monitors, but using a five-inch one? Wait, you don't have a five-inch monitor. This doesn't think is the five-inch monitor is like what is that? Like a phone? Anyway, um, CT rabbits. So for for years. 47 CT suffered from rodents introduced from Earth, decimating crops. However, they have turned this to their advantage and now farm them in great numbers as the local environment ma makes the meat curiously sweet. This rare good is legal in all markets. So, I guess, is rabbit a rodent? I never really thought of it as a rodent, but I guess it's, yeah, it's pretty rodent-like. I guess it's part of the rodent family. But essentially, they bring the bunnies to this planet, and the bunnies eat the flora, and then the bunnies taste sweeter. So that's kind of what we're talking about here with farts, with cow farts, but just for the the meat of uh, of it. And sorry, vegetarians, we're gonna we're gonna grab four rabbits here. I would grab more, but you know we want to keep some room for the other cargo space. So right now we're up to we got some Terex spice, some CT rabbits. What is next on the list? Uh, Oh shit, I reorganized the damn thing. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna do this manually now. Uh, we don't need the fungus, because that is too much. We got the Turk spice. So hold on. Remove. Remove. Optimize. Okay. So the next place is Viracocha. Viracocha. And this one is going to be interesting. So yeah, just heading basically back in the same direction. Probably could have gone there on the way if we were truly efficient. But that's fine. We don't need full efficiency. So load up on your rabbits. Let's, uh... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, Mr. Jeremy C. Mr. Jeremy C is uh, being ended, apparently. But he will not let it end like this. Alright, and boost through the mail slot. Moaman. As we uh, get heavier and heavier with our cargo, of course our jump range will lower. But that's fine, three jumps to the next location. Um, off topic, made about 11 million from single combat on foot. Damn, that's that's pretty good takeaway. That's about the highest that, uh, the highest I've got is about 9 million. Uh, you're in bed after a major anxiety attack. Well, that's a good place to be. The bed is very safe and comfortable. And uh, you can snuggle up with a blanket. That usually is a good good combination. Arduino is fun and easy to learn. Looking into Raspberry Python. Raspberry plus Python. Wait, what? You're talking about the food or like is that like a coding language? I'm, like very confused right now, but like what? Like eating a Python with raspberries? Interesting. I'm gonna look into this Arduino though, because anything that's like uh, foolproof cooking, right? I hate when you spend so much time and effort on a meal and then you burn it or <laughs> destroy it or some combination of the two. And then all that food is wasted. I did that with a steak once where I just did, did not cook it properly. Um, I had to throw it out. It was like a $20 steak too. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's your phone. Well, there you go. That makes sense why it's a 5-inch screen. Because then I was like, I was gonna say, like, if it was a monitor, I'd be like, that would be like a super tiny monitor, very cute, maybe mounted on the other monitor. Two patties with cheese, isn't that a Big Mac? No, a Big Mac would have two patties and then like a bread in the middle. So you'd have like the outer patty, the inner patty, and the middle patty, or uh, or bottom, top, and middle. And then also, the secret ingredient in a Big Mac is well, you have to have shredded lettuce, you have to have pickles, and a thousand island dressing. That's the secret ingredient. Or something, something to that degree. It might be mixed with something else. I don't know. McDonald's is pretty secretive. Um, where'd my route go? This isn't where I'm going. Why you do this? OK. 
Okay. We'll just replot it. Oh. Wrong system. This one, please. Thank you. What was... What, uh, da, 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 da. How did that happen? Did I pick the wrong system? That's fine. Easy to do. How do you spell the next stop? Um, v I R A Kocha. 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 <laughs> Uh, in and out is so good. Secret menu is epic. The animal style, I agree. The animal style, it's like jarge sauce or whatever, which is like, I, I don't know, like fried mustard or something like that, but I had the animal style fries and it was delicious. But in and out I find is like, I've been to it a couple times when I've been to the States and it's very like inconsistent between locations. Like sometimes it's the best thing I've ever had. Other times it's like, eh. Okay, so we're heading to the patriarchy, <laughs> patriarchy corporate. Down with the patriarchy! We'll just flip ourselves around and head this way. Probably don't need a fuel scoop since we are docking. Um, your last Big Mac was more than a decade ago. Well, good for you, man. I eat way too much McDonald's, and I feel like bitter and angry with myself after every time. It's kind of like one of those things where if you don't eat it for five years, you go back and have a McDonald's burger, you're like, this shit is disgusting. But if you are in the habit of eating it, they're, 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 you crave them. You're, like, addicted to them. And that that's kind of fucked up in a sense, right? Because, like, it's bad food, but there's something in it that, like, once your body has a taste of it, it just it, it needs it. So I feel like they put um, onion head in, in the McPatties. I don't know. Uh, the Golden Arch may have borrowed some ideas from them. From what, in and out Well, I mean... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Golden Arches are not like... A, like, they're a predatory food company. I don't like how they operate their business. I don't like this Ronald McDonald and his gang of... What the hell are they? Like, what are those... Like, there's the Nugget girls that look like birds. And then there's Grimace, the giant purple thing. Is he supposed to be an eggplant? And if so, what can you order at McDonald's that has eggplant in it? Like, what the fuck is Grimace? And then you have the cheese burglar... Who at least he's honest. At least we know his intention. We know he's there to burgle. We don't want. We don't know what Ronald's intention is. What does that clown want? No one knows. It's a mystery. Um, you worked for six weeks at McDonald's thirties, um, thirty years ago or so. Uh, since that time, never again. Yeah, I, I had the the fortune of never never having to work at McDonald's. I don't think I could handle it. They take themselves too seriously. <laughs> you go to Hamburger University. It's like really. Hamburger University. Okay. Uh, income is quite low for your new dig. Your, la uh, your last job was like less than half a dollar an hour. What? American? Less than half a dollar an hour? Damn, that's... Uh, that's that should be illegal. That's, that's too little. Like, I, like, at that point, like, anything would be gotta, gotta be better, but, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, look, I've been in those positions, too, where for, like, four or five years, I was in these, like, shit jobs, door-to-door, -door, telemarketing, customer service. You take what you can get. By the way, this is a really cool-looking station. I like how metallic it is. Looks very metal and gray. Gun metal. But, yeah, sometimes you got you know, it's like it's a shit job, but you gotta pay the rent somehow. So you gotta eat. Uh, Raspberry's a tiny computer. Lord Braben is involved in this. Yeah, I think yeah, Braben developed the, the Raspberry Pi. We used the Raspberry Pi in my old office, and it was just like this tiny little thing. It looked like a USB stick, but you know, it has a processor and can network and stuff. So kind of neat and cool. Yeah, and I, I think Braben developed it. And it's like or was involved in it. And it's really like you know, it's great for the idea of like third world countries where like there's kids that can't afford a computer. Well, hey, here's a microcomputer that easily could be given to a bunch of schools to help, uh, you know, get people uh, from, uh, you know, like, small African country. Hey, here you can learn programming. So, very cool. Down with that kind of stuff. Spread the computers, get everyone on the internet. That is the great equalizer. Once you give people internet, they can learn whatever they want. Um, your DNS filter to block commercials and ads is running on one. What's that? I don't know what a DNS filter is. Blocking commercials? Uh, not because I hate it. I like fast food. It's the price that makes no sense. Well, that said, I did read an article that per capita, the second most... So, so, so like, 
I guess like some food organization did a ranking and they were looking at what is the best bang for the buck food. The number two item was the McDonald's double cheeseburger. Now it's important to mention that the survey was looking at a number of factors, including nutrition, like you know how much protein do you get, cost, and availability or like availability worldwide. The McDonald's cheeseburger ranked at number two because it's so cheap, but you get nutrients from it and it's available everywhere. The number one item was lentils. Lentils was number one. But the McDonald's cheeseburger is surprisingly number two because there's McDonald's everywhere in the world. It's super cheap. And, and you know, when I was poor, um, and I remember it's like, okay, like I've got like three bucks for lunch. It's either a slice of pizza or a double cheeseburger. You know, at least the double cheeseburger has like a pickle on it. That counts as vegetables, right? Right? Anyway. So, okay, this one I'm really interested in. So, the rare commodity at this station is Master Chefs. Not Master Chiefs, Master Chefs. Master Chefs are selected based on genetic markers that tend to favor aptitude for the culinary arts. So these are like people that are genetically disposed to cook, okay? Little is known about them, except that they are kidnapped as children and trained under rigorous conditions to bring out their genetic cooking potential. So, if you have like a kid, and that kid has a propensity to cook, there's some organization that steals your kid and trains them as a world-class chef in some sort of cooking concentration camp. Anyway, the use of master chefs is illegal in most federal and allied systems, but is regarded as a sign of high status in many imperial systems. Many anti-slavery protest groups have tried to free master chefs from their life of culinary bondage. Yet, due to their training, most return of their own free will to serve. They can't get enough cooking. Theirs is a life of servitude. They know nothing but to cook. This rare good is illegal in all, is legal in all imperial markets, imperial dictatorship, feudal, and theocracy markets, and federal democracy markets. It is prohibited in all others. So literally, we're not buying ingredients here. We're buying a chef. I think we'll take three just to be on the safe side. We'll get three chefs in the bucket. This is a fun rare commodity where I'm like, okay, so it's basically a slave that is genetically predisposed and has been highly trained to cook. So this is the, the guy in the back who's gonna put the meal together for us. We're gonna get the ingredients, get it to the master chefs. They're gonna cook us some Thanksgiving turkey and we'll find out who to, who to give it to. Um, they test recipes on rats to see what's the most addictive? Really, is that true? Because that's really fucked up. Uh, I have an open mind towards food, especially when coming from a place with food issues. I hear it, I hear it. Anyhow, what's the stream about? Oh yeah, Ray, so sorry, if you're just joining now, um, it's Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend, so we're doing Space Canadian Thanksgiving. We're going and collecting rare goods, and you know, right now we have Master Chefs to cook our food. We have Tarek Spices to spice up the meal. We've got Seti Rabbits to provide a nice little, like, gamey uh, meat. And we're gonna be going around collecting ingredients, and then at the very end, when we can cook our meal, we're gonna try to interdict people, see if we can find people, interdict them, and give them a nice Thanksgiving feast in space. <laughs> um, uh, then you know why I'm not still getting ODY. Uh, uh, 30 USD is more than a year of a phone plan for me. That's that's not right, man. That needs to, that needs to change. Oh, metal. YouTube suggested Baby Metal the other day. Yo, I fucking love Baby Metal. I want to see Baby Metal live. I think that'd be a great show. Baby Metal's dope. Uh, Arduino is like RPI, but not fully fledged PC. It's just simple chip with some RAM that lets you do some simple stuff for processing. I thought there was a cooking method. What? I'm so confused now. Is is our, our, do we know a cooking method or an actual like PC that you cook food in? Wouldn't that okay, what about a computer that you could have a deep fryer in there and like cook a turkey while you compute? Is that real? What are lentils? Um I don't I don't they're like a vegetable bean legume. I don't know. I don't really eat them that much, but like lentil soup I've had. It's just like a I don't know, it's like a thing that grows. It's flora, okay? What do you want from me? Just Google lentils. They're they're very healthy apparently, and cheap. Uh, in my place, there is a local fast food joint that sells a chicken burger with vegetables and a thousand idle idle side of palm. Two USD with a drink. Pepsi Seven Up rent. Two two dollars USD for a chicken burger. That's kind of that's really good pricing. Uh, DNS domain main server con converts a URL into an IP address. Okay, so that's just like the little turns one thing into it. It's a translator. Raspberry Pi plus Pi Hole blocks commercials when browsing. That's cool. I just use Adblocker. Um, 
get some Staples Peacock meat along with it. I don't have Staples Peacock meat on the list, but I could put that there. Ad block you can touch, that's why I said. Oh, so it's it's like ad block, but you can reach out and pet it and say good ad block. Thank you for, for killing commercials. I like that. Uh, okay, so what is the next system? We are heading now to Mulachi. We've got our chefs, we've got our rabbit and our spices. Oh, we actually passed through this already. Like, why didn't we just stop and go there when we were there? Or wait, have we been there? Hold on. Mulachi, Mulachi, Mulachi. Where is it on the list? Wait a minute. I don't have it on the list. What the hell is in Mulachi? How did this get on my list and what am I doing there? Hold on. <laughs> Mulachi. I just got to check on the internet. What? Oh, oh. Wait, I know why I took it off the list. Because the damn... It's the fungus. No. No. We're not heading another 500,000 light years. <laughs> Spending 15 minutes sitting in space just to get some giant mushrooms. There is some sort of, like, giant fungus or whatever. No. We will head to Isusiku. Which is quite a bit away. Can we get into the system map on that one? Negatory. That's fine. Isusiku. Oh yeah, that's where we're going fancy here. Uh, some relay, some temp probe, turn off the water when temperature over 70. Would that be like for the deep frying computer? I swear to God, I've seen like a joke ad or something like that for like a computer that could also deep fry or something, something to that nature. There we go, Dark Heavy 8 over there. Flying around in a python. Quite a ship. Beautiful ship. Yes, yeah, so I'm like, yeah, sorry if you're already headed to Malachi. I, I didn't realize that we'd already been there, and that was the system that is just too damn far. So again, heading to the Isu Siku system. E S U S E K U. Uh, you just Googled it, they are Linz to me. Linz? Is that what they're called? Linz? Good, cheap, little, nutritious, uh, you get lots of nutrients from lentils. I am pro-lentil. And pro-double cheeseburger. <laughs> just amazing, though, when you think it's just like, yeah, McDonald's has got global proliferation. Like, everyone in every country, for the most part, I think, would recognize a McDonald's logo. But if you saw Ronald McDonald walking down the street, that'd be pretty scary. He's a scary looking dude, man. Not into clowns, gotta say. Don't get don't get people that are that are like, oh I love clowns. Like who is who is like, oh I love clowns! Can't wait to see a clown today. Uh it's just how you can use Audrino to control various things. Audrino. You guys are like way more technically inclined than me, because I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, Stormboard Studios, like, KFC made a gaming console last year that had an air fryer in it. Thank you! Thank you, that's what I remember. Is that real, though? Was that actually real, or was that, like, a joke? Because I'm, I'm kind of like, it's got to be a joke, right? That was just, like, viral advertising, or viral marketing, or whatever. There's no way that would be a real thing. But if it was, I'm strangely tempted to. I mean, it's, you think about it, you got all this heat coming from your computer, why not put it to good use and put a couple slices of bread in there and toast your bread? Right? Computer toasters. Why haven't we got to this this point in technology and development? Come on, human race! Let's get to the, the friggin, you know, I, there are two things that I want. Fusion energy and computer toasters. Uh, you can use a couple line of code to make a slow cooking machine. No fucking way. Are you saying you can actually, like, code a, a, a cooking machine? What? That's pretty damn cool. That would be some next level... Next level engineering. Um, lentils German Linsen. Because they look like a lens. A kind of flattened pea. Linsen. Why does everything sound so much nicer in German? Linsen. But then you have to say it in a real German voice, like, Linsen! Because you have to sound a little angry. 
<laughs> I do love, I, like, I. that's the, I find that, yeah, here in, in, in Toronto, Canada, you don't, like, it's a very multicultural city, but I very rarely see, like, German tourists or hear over, I love over here overhearing two German people speak. It's like the most fun conversation to listen to. No idea what they're saying, but lovely language. Uh, you had one with the GPU you got too hot. For real? <laughs> That's cool. Uh, it's not a fryer, but a warmer. Well, yeah, I guess, like, yeah, if you just, like, make a meal and then just store it in your computer and it keeps the meal warm, you know, you're not dealing with the um, complications of having to cook the meal. But you're keeping it warm. That makes total sense to me. Okay, one more jump to Isu Siku. Of course, we have illegal cargo. What is illegal, by the way? I, can't, I think that the Master Chefs are slaves, and the Tarek Spice might be considered a drug. I mean, technically, caffeine's a drug, right? Uh, you don't know coding, but uh, you can you can give me what false code? You can, oh, uh, but I can give you don't false code. What? Loop when temperature uh, greater than seventy, then power on, else off end. That's a simple code. I wish I knew more about electronics and coding. There's part of me that like wants to take like a programming course, and I'd love to get into video game design. Um, I'd love to write video games, um, specifically like RPGs and stuff like that. Um, hold on, let me check. Where are we going here? ECQ to Sevenya Orbital. Please don't be 500,000 light years away. 278. Okay, I can live with that. <laughs> so yes, Sevenya Orbital. Um, using Arduino to control monitor temperature. What? That's kind of cool. If you could program the world, would be in danger. <laughs> I don't. Well, I don't think so. Maybe it's just the internet. In society, I think the world would be fine. Earth will live on. No matter what we do to this planet, no matter how, we, how much we fuck it up, it's, we're only going to fuck it up for ourselves. Earth will rebound and recover. It is strong planet. Very big, big energy. Big planet energy. That's why I can make it with only a few lines of code. So it's like, it's like I guess it, it's such a simplified coding language that like you just need to use simple logic. You don't need to like do weird squiggly brackets and slashes and all that sort of stuff. I remember back in the day, I did learn HTML, and I coded some websites from scratch, um, where I would build them in Notepad, and then I would move the code into front page um, to get a preview. So it was kind of like semi-cheating, right? But I still coded it in Notepad, and I was somewhat competent. I did a website with frames. Remember frames? That was top of the line advanced shit back then. Frames. And then like things were starting to get into CSS and then when things got to PHP I'm like, I don't know anymore. I'm done learning. It's too much information in my head. If I learn anything new, something else will go. <laughs> that slow kicking stuff is just a switch with the temperature probe. I mean, it's kinda cool. Earth will live on. It's a good corporate catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, don't use this as, like, anti-global warming propaganda. Just because Earth will live on doesn't mean that we shouldn't try to, like, preserve the human race. We're kind of an anomaly among the animal kingdom. Until we reach uh, extraterrestrial life, I mean, there aren't many species. Oh, no, he's scanning. Uh, silent running, silent running. Okay, landing pad 11. That is right here. And turn silent running off. I think once, once you get into the uh, station proper, they can't scan you. Yeah, at this point we are technically smuggling, so I could get shot in the sky. That would be dangus. Alright, so Savinki Orbital. 
let's check out what we got here. So Isusiku Caviar. After being discovered in an ancient gene bank, the last of the cryogenically stored sturgeon eggs were purchased for an undisclosed but reliably enormous sum. After a long search for an appropriate environment, they were introduced to the waters of Isusiku, and their owner's relief, to their owner's relief, hatched and established a breeding colony. These ancient fish continue to thrive in the waters of Isusiku, making them the primary producer of caviar in known space. So this is the old earth sturgeons. I guess they went extinct. They found their genes stored in some doomsday vault, and the, the, the caviar flows again. So we'll grab a couple caviars. I don't think we'll get... Maybe... Eh, we'll do three. These are basically fish eggs. And that's, you know, put a little fancy... Throw a little fanciness into our little Thanksgiving meal. It's pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Dark of Eight. We're going to need to interdict a noob and a Type 9 with all this stuff. I mean, I just want to interdict him and then just launch this stuff out of my cargo bay and have him scoop it up manually. <laughs> And then walk up. And then walk them away. Yeah, we could we could certainly bring them into port. Uh, early 2000, it was so difficult to build some gadgets. You learned how to code microprocessors. Now, pff, my nine-year-old can do this because plug and play. Our code is already available. Grab code and tweak. So sort of like okay, like I can do some amazing things in an Excel document, but then I think like, what if you had to build the program Excel from scratch? That's genius. Like, there are some geniuses out there with coding. And they've made life easier for all of us by, you know, there's the code and then there's like the deeper code, right? Like you're coding and then it's taking that code and deep coding it based on the code of what it's written in. It's incredible. Codes within codes. Uh, DHA, yes, inverse virus and give stuff. Yeah, that's what I love to do. Um, mode furtive. Sounds cool in the French computer. <laughs> I do like the French computer. It's like a very sexy accent. Okay, that wasn't... That wasn't sexy, but okay. Uh, no one write HTML or Dreamweaver anymore. All of them just load some templates in a backend, change something like F12 and refresh until you don't feel like it. Yeah, I mean, it's probably how I would build a website if I had to do today. Ah, the old days of HTML and Dreamweaver where we'll be useful once again after the apocalypse begins. Well, I don't know. After the apocalypse begins, I don't know if we're going to have that much uh, need for websites, but well, hopefully the internet will persist even through the apocalypse. Uh, in my old place, you can be put in jail because you have a website, because your site has a guest book. No way. Yeah, that's 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 oppressive. That's crazy. North Korea. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's crazy levels of just like restriction. You know, it's just like you know, with uh, the freedom to do what you want, you get some weird weird shit going on on the internet. Anyone can have a website and then you get some really bizarre ones, but you, know, you gotta take the good with the bad. It's better to have the freedom to express yourself, even if you're a weird, strange, crazy person. Alright, um, where are we going next? Wait, hold on, hold on. Trespass, trespass, no, no, go, 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 go. Do not get fine. Don't shoot me. Ship scan, okay, hold on. We're, uh, uh, running away. Illegal cargo. Uh, okay. Hopefully that will just stop those scans while I can punch in our destination. Which is 9 re gay But gay with an E. I feel like I'm jumping back and forth. Like, this is not efficient traveling. Okay, silent running off. Start that jump, 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 jump. Man cob. Really? I feel like I can just make the jump through the station. Hopefully I don't hit the mass lock zone. Beautiful. Heading to Mancob. I feel dirty saying that. Um, after the apocalypse, you don't need HTML. Just some old dudes who know something called ham radio. Back to the ham. I wish there was a... If there was a ham radio rare good in this game, I would... Pretend that was uh, a ham, and we could have steamed ham with our meal, but I don't think there is. Not to be confused with salami radio. <laughs> salami radio. Salami is rocket fuel, not radio. Wait, what? What? Salami is rocket fuel? For real? 
They 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 have salami powered rockets. I want to know about these salami powered rockets. What is in the Mancom system again? I'll, let me just see here. Shaw orbital. Mancob. I assume that's like some scientist name or something. No worries, I'm a good guy. Loot is asking if you copulate with us. What? <laughs> Copulation? So we are heading to the Nine Arge system. Uh, at this place, we are going to find. Do I even watch Mythbusters? Um, I, I used to. Uh, I don't think I've, I've not seen every episode. Did the, is that was that was that a myth? Like, can salami be turned into rocket fuel? And they they confirmed it. Mythbusters are cool. Definitely like them. Yeah, I, I don't have um, I don't have like cable TV. I watch pretty much the only TV shows I watch are on like Netflix or Amazon Prime. I just don't have like a cable package. The TV that I do have has a VHS machine built in, so I'm still able to watch my lovely 90s VHS movies, but um, and I don't have like regular TV channels. So if it's on like streaming services, then you know, I'll watch it. Um, but uh, if it's like a TV show, no. Tukosa just found salami powered rockets online. Okay, I gotta look that up after because I want to make a salami rocket. That sounds cool. Loot's like, no, because that show ended 10 years ago. That's no excuse not to watch it, Loot. It's still a good show. Just because it's not around anymore. I still, I, I, I binge watch the entire uh, uh, series of Columbo uh, every couple of years. And uh, that show's been off the air for a long time. <laughs> Although, amazingly, for a show that started in the 60s, it persist, persisted. Up until like the last episode, or they made like a movie. It was like Columbo goes to college or something like that. I can't remember what the last one was called, but that was like early two thousands or maybe maybe late nineties. Anything that has C H and O, you can make rocket fuel out of. What C would be what carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It's like paraffin, sugar, and and salami. Huh. I want to make a rocket. Do you remember there was that guy who was like a flat earther who built his own rocket and then died? <laughs> I laugh at this guy's death and I don't even feel bad because that's dumb. <laughs> You're a dumbass. But at the same time, I'm like, really good entertainment, buddy. Thank you for that. That was quite a fun story. <laughs> Fitting ending for a flat earther. Uh, Hunt Enterprise is where we're heading here. Uh, please don't tell me it's like really super far. Okay, you know what? There's so much in the system, it might be easier to find here. It's this one. Okay, 68,000 away. That's At least it wasn't in this damn uh, half a million light year system away. 67 light seconds. I can deal with that. You loved Columbo. I still love Columbo. Columbo is like one of the greatest shows ever. Uh, Columbo must have had some cheap royalty deals. It's been on worldwide forever. Well, I mean, like, there's so much content. There's so many, like, you have, like, William Shatner in it twice. Leonard Nimoy plays a bad guy. The the villains and the caliber of something. You got Johnny Cash played a villain um, in one. Um, amazing actors that played alongside Columbo. And then Peter Falk himself was just, like, one of the greatest actors and just so embraced that character. And yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sure it's probably, uh, it'll be in syndication as long as TV's in existence. Even though, like, you look at some of the older episodes that are very, you know, from the 60s, and they're kind of dated um, in their filmmaking style, but they still hold up. They're still dramatic, still interesting to watch. I love Columbo. It's one of my favorite shows. Uh, Tukosa, you're not a part of this world, then. What? You're not a part of this world. Well, technically, uh, technically you are. You're made of matter and, and, uh, and bits and bobs that come from this, this world. We are all made of stars, as Moby says. Um, the thing is that the F.E. rocket, flat earth rocket guy might end up in some kind of history book. But I mean, like, okay, like, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. Would you, 
if you could, okay, because like it would be really hard to get into the history books the old-fashioned way by doing something really good, contributing to society, being Einstein, inventing a new form of space-time physics. Would you, you know, but like, you know, the other way to get in the history book is to do something really bad, like, you know, like that Hitler guy, you know. Um, blowing yourself up in a rocket while trying to hit space because you're an idiot? I mean, you still got in the history books, so respect, right? Like, you know, you did something. You're, you're going to be remembered forever, so. <laughs> oh, yes! And Stormborn, you, you, yes, thank you for pointing that out. Yes, Shatner, William Shatner, is going to space on the Blue Origin. Which I've also heard might not be the safest rocket. And I, it would be terrible if Captain Kirk were to blow up in a rocket. Um, I mean, still a better death than a bridge falling on him. Looking at you, Generations. But I think that's super cool that William Shatner is going to space. I think it. I think that the only thing that could make it better is if Patrick Stewart joined him. That would be super cool. Uh, Lute is asking, can you hit Takosa with a chair on his face? Um, I mean, is, is this a can or may question? I mean, physically, you probably can. I wouldn't do that, though. Don't do that to Takoso. Don't hit him in the face with a chair. Maybe, like, how about you build a salami rocket and launch it in his general direction? <laughs> um, even as a crazy engineer building a steam-powered engineer... Uh, just for that approach. Uh, my brain not working there. Um, no way Shatner's going... Yes, Shatner is going to space. He's going to be the oldest person to ever head to space. Which kind of concerns... I'm like, I'm like, I hope he doesn't die. I hope nothing bad happens. I do like William Shatner, despite his, like, you know, weird ego and shenanigans. But um, I love the fact that Captain Kirk will get to go to space. I think that's that's right and proper. I think Patrick Stewart needs to join him. And uh, what's what's her name? Um, who played Janeway. Uh, can never remember the actress's name. And uh, and then, of course, uh, Avery Brooks as uh, Commander, as Cisco. They need to put more Star Trek people up in space. Just give them... They, they gave us their character for years and years and years. Let them go to space. Jeff Bezos. Yeah, rich bastard. Man, I wish I could fly with you, although I don't have a mic. Oh, you can always fly with me. Just, you know, come and open an Odyssey and uh, friend me up, uh, Spatula007 in the in the friend box or whatever however you do this. Um, and you can always uh, fly with me on these streams. If there's room in the wing, of course. Or if not, you can come along and try and blow me up. <laughs> uh, also, that wasn't serious on the Flat Earth guy. Uh, if the Blue Origins blows up history book. Well, there you go. I mean, William Shatner, my thing is, like, he's already in the history books. He's Captain Kirk. That will live on. Uh, like, Einstein is one of the great human myths. Even in 3307, I'm sure we... we Kathleen something. Yes, it is something like that. Um, someone looked that up and put her name in here because she was great. Um, even though I, I hated Voyager. I was like, it wasn't a very good show. I mean, I didn't hate it, but it was just like, eh, this is so, like... This is like... What you know when TNG would get bad, it was like that was more consistent in Voyager. Like there were some good episodes of Voyager, but eh. overall it just didn't didn't have the peaks. It didn't have like a, a best of both worlds, bearded Riker era. And I'm like, they're making another season of Picard, and they're still continuing with this like Discovery show, and I'm like, I'm not digging them. I get that some people are. Hey, that's cool. But I'd just rather see a new Star Trek show. Just throw those two out and try again. <laughs> get it right this time. Uh, Shatner owns a photon with 12... A phaeton with 12 cylinders. Wait, what's that? What's a phaeton? Is it like a photon? Uh, Kathleen something. I, I, I'm in trouble now, dude. <laughs> uh, VW phaeton looks like a Passat. But it's a Bentley. Ooh. So that sounds like very fancy. F fancy. Very fancy. 12 cylinders seems like a little overkill, though. That's got a guzzle gas. I know that, you know, I keep seeing these articles that were pretty close to fusion. And I'd really, really like us to get to fusion-powered rocket cars. That would be sweet. Of course, then, you know, everyone's walking around with a fusion bomb, potentially. But, uh, hey, I like to live dangerously. 
Unpopular opinion, you like the reboot trilogy. Um, I'm with you on, I really like the reboot, um, the first Star Trek one with um, Eric Bana as the bad guy and, and obviously the whole new cast. I didn't like Into Darkness. I found it like the whole con thing really turned me off. Kate Mulgrew, thank you. Kate Mulgrew. Catherine Janeway, right, that was her character name. Um, who is Mike? Uh, 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 funny joke, Luke. <laughs> or Mick, maybe Mick Turner. Mick Turner from the Barnacle, uh, the you know, the old Alliance, uh, old Alliance Sea Dog Mick, Mick Turner, the famous explorer who went missing and became a, a Thargoid uh, patron. Um, okay, so but back to the Star Trek reboot trilogy. I really like the reboot. I was like, you know, this this is like, I get that they have to update it and make it more action-packed, and I enjoyed that aspect of it. It's not the same Star Trek, but it's like, hey, cool, this is like a new generation, but the actors were so great at capturing, like, Carl Urban was fantastic as Bones, Zachary Quinto, phenomenal Spock. I can't imagine another actor doing as well um, in that role as Leonard Nimoy. Um, uh, and then uh, uh, Chris Pine was fantastic Kirk. Like, it was all really well done. Second movie, the con thing really turned me off. It, I don't know, the plot was kind of forgettable. It felt like it was doubling down on, like, action. There's, like, a fight on a train. I'm like, what kind of, what, what the hell is this? Um, but the third one, Star Trek Beyond, um, I really, really liked that one. It kind of had a weak villain, sort of fell apart in the third act, but um, lots of imaginative, fun sci-fi stuff. And I loved, you know... Okay, yeah, there's this stupid action scene with, like, Kirk going around on a dirt bike and, like, whatever. But I really enjoyed it. Um, I really enjoyed it overall. Um, I thought it felt like it captured some of the spirit of the original series. I love the beginning, the opening of that film, where Kirk just completely gaffs up a diplomatic uh, first contact thing. And they're kind of running. And it was, like, really fun. I really liked the Beyond. And, um... It surprised me, because when I saw the trailer, and it was like, Beastie Boy Sabotage, and I'm like, what are they doing? They're not, they don't know what Star Trek is anymore. Wait, why couldn't I dock? Oh wait, I apparently don't have this. What? What just happened there? Okay, apparently I've got something else targeted, so I wasn't able to jump out. It's fine. We'll just do an unnecessary loop of shame. We'll see. Okay, so Khan, the reason I didn't like it, like, I thought Benedict Cumberbatch was, um, you know, fine in that role. He's always a fantastic actor. It's just like, okay, number one, um, you've rewritten the continuity, right? Because, like, the whole point of... The whole point of Khan is that they, like, find him in Space Seed and he's in Cryogenic Frozen, so... There's, like, history between them that the movie was capitalizing on, which is what made it great. You don't have that history now. And when he goes like, I'm Khan, it's like, what the hell does that mean to anyone in there? Obviously to an old school Star Trek fan, they're like, oh, I get it, Khan. You know, Ricardo Montalbach in that killer performance, which this is not. So it, just, it didn't make sense to me that it's like, okay, like you're relying on nostalgia here. These characters don't care who Khan is. Khan, like he, he should have just been like a random villain. And I think it would have been fine. The con thing just, like, really soured it for me, where I was like... And, and honestly, like, I don't like, uh... I, I think J.J. Abrams is a fine director. I think he's great at rebooting things and kind of finding, um... Like, hey, let's find that way to bring something to modern speed. But don't let him do anything after that, and certainly do not let him or his cronies, like Damon Lindelof, uh, do not let them write the script. Because they are not my favorite writers. Oop, there's their landing pad. Had 41, if you please. And that's how you dock. Ladies and gentlemen, we are docking. Hold on. Let's just line it up. Okay. And to go with our meal, well, let me just restock. What did I lose stock of? Oh, heat sink, probably. Yeah, cover watch. See you, Ray. 07. You watched Beyond like four times in theater. It is fun, man. It is a fun movie. And I'm like, you know what? Like, at least it had the spirit of Star Trek and the modern times modernization. But, like, I enjoyed it immensely. I love the cast of that, too. Um, the guy who plays Sulu as well. Uh, just every, and Uhura. Like, it's just like, they, they made Sulu and Uhura, like, better characters. The only thing that, that really um, kills me is Anton Yelchin, man. 
Love that kid as an actor. I've seen him in a lot of movies. I've always liked him in every movie I've seen him in. And uh, poor guy was was uh, untimely killed. Uh, but he was great for Chekhov. So yeah, to go with our Thanksgiving meal, we're going to get some Saxon wine here. A near-perfect replication of the famed 2093 vintage wines produced on ancient Earth in our near future. Uh, that year's wine was universally declared the best ever produced and has yet to be topped. Probably because of global warming increasing the temperature. I don't know. Scientists on Hill Orbital were able to replicate the famous wine and now guard the secrets of the formula with care. This rare good is legal in all markets except for prison colonies, apparently. And federal theocracy, for reasons. So we'll pick up a couple bottles of Saxon wine to add to our feast. Let's just take inventory of what we got here. So we got some Master Chefs to cook us up. We've got some caviar, a very nice appetizer. Some Turk Spice Seti Rabbits as our main course, and uh, Saxon wine to go down with it. So let me see here. Uh, what would be next? Next we're going to have to... Is it going to go this one? Yes. This will be important for our monster introduction. The next location will be... Oops. Probably need an H there. Nope. Stop it. HIP 41181, which is only a couple jumps away, only a handful of jumps away. And hold on, where's that thing that I absolutely needed? That one. Okay. Uh, is it one? Okay. Sorry, just checking the list here. Keeping track of time. I feel like we'll get a couple. I just want a little more, a few more food items in there and then we can start the second phase which is trying to interdict someone make them eat a Thanksgiving meal in front of us and if they don't say thank you we'll kill them with our lasers uh, Khan was supposed to be superhuman so lies beyond human capabilities and the movie's just an anime mid-level boss yeah I agree and like there was this other layer with like the bad commander or something like that I don't know it was really convoluted for a plot but it's like, okay, the Wrath of Khan was all about, like, the revenge for what Kirk did to him. <clears throat> and this, there's no, like, personal connection between the two. So it's like, my name isn't Commander John Jameson Jr. My name is Khan! Who gives a shit? <laughs> Unfortunately, Idris Elba, who also a fantastic actor, was kind of wasted in the third one, where... Like, I remember at the, at the end of Beyond, like, at the very end, they just throw all this exposition of, like, oh, yeah, and this is what the villain happened, and this is what all, all the shit that went down. It needed to be, like, built up through the, uh, through the movie. So the third one, unfortunately, had a weak villain as well. I think the first one had a pretty good villain with Eric Bana. Um, like, killed Kirk's father, so there's that personal connection. He's got this big ship from the future, so he's got this sort of oppressive, um, an oppressive foe to be fought, but yeah, Khan just felt like okay. I, I guess it's just like Bene evil Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay, this is weird because yeah, my root got messed up again. It did it again. I don't know. Am I doing something wrong? It's fine. We plot it. Two jumps. Oh, we'll be heading through Nagandi. I don't know why Nagandi. I, I head through this system so often. It's like, I guess in a really good position in the bubble. In terms of, like, its relationship to other stars. Do I have an interdictor? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, they won't recast Chekhov, I think, unless reboot again. Yeah, I mean, like, at this point, they might as well just say, Ah, oh, yeah, he he's commanding his own ship somewhere else. He's, he's doing fine. Unfortunately, um... Uh, yeah, like, like, there wasn't... Like, I mean, look, there, there never really was that much going on with Chekhov's character. It was unfortunate, because Walter Koenig was a great, great, great actor in that series. And he's probably one of the few, I feel like, original series alumni that, like, would have come back and done more stuff with it. They should have done a series called Chekhov and just had Chekhov have his own ship. Like, they should have done one for Sulu, one for Chekhov, um, and maybe a series called Bones, which would be, like... A young bones in his first mission like there could be all sorts of great star trek spin-offs but um no let's reboot con let's just do con again yeah jerks get your own ideas uh man if frontier can make an app to control things like destiny 2 i thought about that i'm like wouldn't it be cool if you could put 
like uh, a control pad on your phone and steer your ship. But realistically, there's just so much going on, so many key bindings and all that sort of stuff. Okay, uh, what are we looking for? We're looking for Anderson Station. I'm gonna do this from the, the gal map. Please, oh no, it's so far away! Yeah, we got another one, but this one, I refuse to let this go by. This is an important ingredient for our two ducking. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Okay, you know what? This is a good time for a bio break. So, <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop into, hold on, let me just make sure I'm not drifting off target. Let's line it up real nice. We'll kill some time with a bio break, give you all and myself a chance to pee-pee. Or whatever you want to do. My lovely purple ass scout. Ain't it pretty? Actually, maybe not. Let's not do exterior null. Let's maybe just do a nice cockpit view. That's cool. Oh, shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I moved. Line it up again. Yeah, 500,000, that's like, what, 10, 15 minutes? I won't do a bio break that long, but... There we go, I think that's nice. Okay, well, I will do a short five-minute break and just let, let things go there. I'll throw up the little bio break. Bio break, bio break. -o. So I'll be back in five minutes, and then we will continue talking about lovely food and Star Trek and all those lovely things. Uh, and uh, while we are en route to the Anderson Station. See you shortly.
All right, I'm back. And now I'm properly hydrated. Turn off the bio break. I'm actually very glad because I realized that I'm like, let's like go to the bathroom and then I'm like, I'm like in open with illegal cargo traveling in super cruise. I hope I don't get interdicted. <laughs> that could have been interesting. But yeah, hydrate, stretch your legs, stretch your arms, stretch your face, stretch everything. You gotta do it. Make sure that you don't get um, uh, swamp butt or something. I don't know. You can get a disease if you sit too long. Uh, let me just catch up here. So, um, man, in Frontier Command, uh, not lying, I wasn't that into space games after driven away by EVE Online with its spreadsheets. The scene and beyond made me into No Man's Sky and ED. I like No Man's Sky. I like Elite Dangerous. I have Star Citizen. I don't really play it that often because it's not, like, it's impressive, but then you're like, okay, this is cool, but I, like, want to wait until it's... Like, you know, it's, it's not like I have anything against Star Citizen. It's just, just it's not ready for me to enjoy yet. But I, I only bought, like, a basic ship. And then I upgraded it a little bit. I spent a little bit of extra money to upgrade it to the one that has the ejector seat. <laughs> I did this video. It was like Scorb was, uh, wanted me to, like, test out new ships uh, and put my Tom Fulluri to, to good use. And <laughs> I found an ejector seat and <laughs> ejected myself. And I'm like, okay, I need that ship with the ejector seat just because that's fun. Uh, it also has a little nice interior, interior angle, but I won't spend any more money on that game until it's actually out. Um, but, you know, I appreciate the escape and ambition that it's going. No Man's Sky is really fun, but I don't really play that much anymore. And what I really like from that game, I really like the base building in No Man's Sky uh, more than most of the other aspects of the game. Exploration is fun, but after a while, it is kind of repetitive. Um, but, I don't know, I haven't played it in a while. I haven't, like, given it a really good run in a while, so... I don't know. Sean Murray, I appreciate what that team is doing. They keep updating that game. Like, they just released another big update for settlements, uh, which I haven't checked out yet. And then Sean Murray tweets, like, oh, yeah, we're working on our next big surprise. And I'm like, damn, they're still going. So, mad respect for Sean Murray. Um, I will probably get back into No Man's Sky one day, but... Um, I just tend to get sucked into the base building, but... I love space games. I've always been a big fan. My first space game was Privateer, Wing Commander, the whole Wing Commander series, Wing Commander 1 through 4. Uh, 4 especially, because, I mean, Wing Commander, you got Mark Hamill. Like, you can't get any better than Mark Hamill. One of the greatest actors of all time, of any generation. Luke Skywalker and the Joker. Um, and then I can't remember his name from Wing Commander. But then in Wing Commander 4, the bad guy, or I shouldn't, oh, spoilers, but um, Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm freaking McDowell and Mark Hamill. That is star power. Like, if anything, Chris Roberts knows uh, how to big up the talent uh, just by throwing some cool celebrities in there. Another space game I enjoyed was called Tachyon. Tachyon's a really fun game. Bruce Campbell uh, of Evil Dead fame uh, is the, uh, the voice of the character, Jake Logan, in that uh, game. That was a fun one. Uh, Star Lancer, Freelancer, like I've always gobbled up any space sims that I can get my hand on, but Elite takes the cake. Definitely my favorite. Like, between Elite, the Fallout series, and the XCOM series, I don't even need other games in my life. That's enough for me. Uh, get another drink! What drink? Coffee! How do you like your coffee? I like my coffee crisp! I don't know if anyone remembers that commercial, but that's stuck in my head. I like my coffee crisp! Uh, yeah, water is good for, for things. I had a coffee, um, a coffee this morning that's got my juices flowing. But water is the best thing for hydration. You can't get sick of water. You can't live without Pepsi Black. Ew. Or Pepsi Max. No sugar. So I'm, I, I, I like Coke Zero. I'm a Coke, uh, Coke versus Pepsi person. I know, I know. We're, we're becoming more divisive as a society every day. It's Coke versus Pepsi, Doritos versus whatever other chips there are. I know. I'm, I, I'm being uh, in, in camped or entrenched in one ideology, the Coke ideology versus the Pepsi ideology. But hey, if you like it, you like it. I prefer the Coke Zero. But actually, funny enough, uh, I prefer now Coke Zero to the original Coke. Even though it's the sugar-free one, I think it tastes better. And it's probably better for you. <laughs> Uh, original Coca-Cola, full fat, all sugar. See, okay. I do say, okay, the one thing I like better than Coke Zero in a can, by the way, it has to be in a can for some reason, is Cherry Coke 
in a, in a glass bottle. Nothing will ever beat Cherry Coke in a glass bottle. Rule the galaxy! Come to the dark side, my child! Uh, that and two chocolate bars equal sugar rush for the afternoon. Yeah, I'm a chocolate fiend, man. I love chocolate bars. It's just like... It's it's crack it's crack for kids, right? Uh, and Zakao, you have a soft spot for UI design, and the new stuff in Odyssey really tickles me. It tickles you in a good way or a bad way? I'm not. Uh, I think that if I were in charge of Elite, I think they do need to look at some UI redesigns. Like, I mean, this, this thing has gotten real complicated. <laughs> There's a lot of information in the UIs so many different screens and I think like at some point or another it would be nice if they did a refresh I'm not a huge fan of the station screens like I think like in general and especially the the Odyssey um, like wheels and stuff like that it's not I don't know I feel like they could do better I feel like if they did like a UI pass like just an update where they're like we're just gonna update the UI make it smoother easier to find like one thing that really grinds my gears is the you go to the station menu, you go to contacts, and then you have to all these different contacts. And I'm like, just simplify that and merge them, right? Like, let me just go to one contact to redeem my combat bonds and my local bounties. And, you know, don't make me go through a bunch of different sub menus. Have it all just there, right? I don't know. I, I, I feel like, like there's probably like a better way to do the UI, though I'm not a designer. I, I don't know the answer, but it's something that like I don't think is perfect in Elite. I think it's functional, like, for such a complex game and with so many things, like, yeah, um, there's so much going on in these UIs, all these filters and different navigation options and sub-menus and codexes and whatnot, but I feel like, you know, if, if they just really just sat down and focused on it, they could probably make it even better. Uh, do, 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 where were we here? Um, your mouth turns sour when you have sugar. Is it, should it be turned sweet? And the other way around? I don't know. Different people have the different taste buds, right? Stretch your face. That's your job, Spatula. <laughs> well, I hope, you're, hope your face is stretching, either frowning or smiling. It doesn't matter to me as long as you're getting your mouth exercises in. Or maybe your eyebrows are stretching in puzzlement and disarray. Uh, speaking of injector sheets, let's just chop it with them. A chop it with them. Well, ejector seat in a helicopter, you mean? Like, that would, like, like, or like, like, your ejector seat has, like, a little helicopter propeller on it. That would be super cool, actually. It reminds me of, like, Inspector Gadget or something. Uh, Takoso, you're saying you haven't tried the settlements update. You do find it really repetitive, and maybe you can only do one repetitive game. Yeah, I just think it's, like, because I'm so entrenched in Elite, I find it difficult to get into No Man's Sky as Star Citizen and just become as enraptured with the world, right? I can't have that many universes going on in my brain, even to the point where like, I have to like, think to myself like, okay, the Fallout universe probably happens in Elite, but just in the past, and so does XCOM. It's all one universe in my mind. I can't have multiple universes. Two is enough. This universe that we live in, and then 3307, and that's that's it. That's all my brain can take. Even games like Rocket League, I'm just like, oh, this is on some planet in Elite. Like in my brain, it's all just one. One big universe. Um, Zakao, your base grew too big for your machine to run, so you're AFK for now. I assume you're talking about No Man's Sky. Yeah, the base building I really liked, and it was kind of simple, but it seems like with every update it's become so complex. I don't have half the blueprints, and I just don't know what... Like, they added, like, a power update, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. It's, like, almost, like, maybe too complex, but... I, it's more because I'm probably not taking the time to learn. If I took the time to learn, I probably wouldn't feel that way. Uh, Coke Zero is less sweet than Pepsi and has a bitter hint. Maybe that's why I like it, because I'm a bitter a bitter bastard. But yeah, Pepsi definitely is sweeter. and that's pro I don't like sweet drinks, I think. That's, that's probably why I've gone to like black coffee and why I like drinking water. Is I don't like sweet. I like bitter with, with drinks. But I like sweet food, like chocolate. Uh, you do and can get sick of water. What? You can even die. Okay, I have heard that, yeah, you can over drink water and actually kill yourself by drinking too much water. Drink two gallons of water right now. I don't, like, I'm like, how are you physically, I don't think I'm physically, I would just start throwing up. 
than two gallons of water. It definitely is salt water, but I, I I don't think I'll ever get sick of like, oh yeah, I'm tired of water. It, it's tasteless, right? It's this magical fluid that life flows from. And when you the more you think about water, it, it is really this magical, magical liquid, right? It is this it is the blood of life. And it's tasteless and it's everywhere. Pepsi is sweeter and with a herbal hint. Well, see, you probably have better taste buds than me. My, my taste buds are not, uh, uh, would not be able to pick up the subtlety. All I taste is the fizzy bubbles. Uh, sorry, double O ladle, nothing beats Nuka Quantum. Well, I agree. Mainly because it glows. Uh, UI and space games are always disasters. ED is quite decent, at least it's neat and stylish. Well, this is, I, I do agree with you. I think ED has the best UI out of the three big space games, No Man's Sky, Star Citizen, and, and, and ED. Star Citizen is kind of cool, but also very convoluted and confusing. And I find it's like too messy and the menus feel too menu-y. Um, <clears throat> Elite, I think, does strike a good balance. I still think there's way more they can improve on, but I do think they're top form compared to the other games I've played. Though I kind of like, I miss um, like in Privateer, like when you went to the mission boards, I don't know, like you, you'd see like a picture of the space station, you click on the screen. They kind of added that in Odyssey with like the terminals, but I still feel like it's weird that like you go to a terminal in a station, you don't have the same options as on your ship, but it looks the same. And I feel like if they're going to be different, they should have some differentiation. But uh, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I, I just think that, you know, if they spent time being like, okay, let's spend like three months just on UI, like have a team just on, on UI, they could probably, probably improve things. And they have to be like, okay, like let's tear apart everything we have now and sort of rebuild it and see what we can make more efficient or what isn't needed, right? Or what can be, uh, but you know, I think that again, it's, it's impressive. The amount of information that's in this game within the menus is something to behold. Uh, Chikosa says they whole, did a whole stream on UI. Oh, you know what? I did I did see that prompt. I, I honestly I don't watch the Frontier live streams anymore because they're kind of like sometimes they get kind of boring. <laughs> they do a lot of talking about stuff. It's just like if they have more like condensed interviews and put them out as like twenty minute videos, I'd watch every one of them. But um, if I like they do their, they always do live streaming when I'm working and I don't have the chance to actually watch like oh let's watch a two hour stream. I wouldn't mind, I would love it if people did highlights. Like, that would be something... I wish, like, Obsidian Ant would do more, um, like, clip bits of their stream and just do videos on that. Or maybe Galnet News, or I don't know, one of those guys, Burr Pit, someone. Uh, I tend to watch the community condensed uh, versions from our great news networks, such as the Burr Pit or Obsidian Ant or uh, uh, Galnet News is another good one with Beetle Jude. Um... But they do have to think about loads of stuff like bandwidth and console limits. Uh, you like the new mission plotting button so you can just plot straight to the mission. Yeah, like little shortcuts like that I think definitely are nice quality of life, right? I'm not hating sweet, it's just sugar turned sour. Hey, well, hey, that's uh... I mean, let me put it this way, it's like uh, everyone has different tastes, right? Like, And even as you go through life, your tastes evolve. Like I never used to like green beans, but now I love green beans. Like as a kid, I wouldn't eat them. I would leave them on the plate. But now, a little salt and butter on them? Oh, gobble them up. Delicious. So even through life, your taste buds will change. Um, you have a very high standard towards UIs, and you're a WoW player. Yeah, I never got into WoW. Uh, you tinker with mods all the time, but for space games, my bar is much lower. I just want it to be look good, fit the game, and somewhat usable. Well, look, I think Elite is absolutely functional. Right? It might be a big, bigger learning curve for someone new, but once you've been playing for a while, it is functional. I'm not complaining about the UI, I just think that it could be better. It could always be better. And oh my god, it's doing the thing again. Okay. It's There's something weird today, and I don't know, it's from a recent update, where like, the targeting is unclicking or something. Let's run through the wings. The rings. Don't get hit by the holes, or those satellite, or uh, solar panels. Man, I would love to live in a space station that rotates like that in the rings and just look up in the sky and see, like, the other part of the ring. Like, how cool would that be? I just, like, you know, but think about how many materials, like, how long would it take to really build, realistically, one of these stations? They're huge. 
Like, each one of those little panels there with those little windows, that's like, that's like a skyscraper. Oh, okay, saw it running, hold on. I keep forgetting, I have a legal cargo. I am smuggling. I need to, like, not gawk at the stations and get in here to safety. Here we are. Landing pad three, if you please. Come in nice and slow, because we don't have shields. Don't want to hurt the paint job. Oh, damn it, we still lost 1%. Refuel, repair, restock. All the good stuff. Now, uh, like that Galnet thing, they should let the community get into it more. I agree. I think that, like, like I think the devs are doing such a poor job. <laughs> like, okay, occasionally they have these really cool storylines. I love the Azimuth saga right now, but... Um, and what I love before, I love the hunt and, and the, the barnacles and the whole reveal up to the Thargoids. They have some really cool threads, but they rely too much on like them curating the story. And oftentimes they'll be like these long political stories or like, oh, this corporation has merged with another corporation. Isn't this interesting, guys? Don't you really, aren't you engaged with the story? No, no one cares about that stuff. Um, and I feel like there are so many cool player events and stuff that happens and there needs to be a way to get into Galnet where, you know, if you kill 17 ships in a system that that might register in Galnet as in like, you know, a local murder, like a local Galnet feed that's like, a local murderer has killed 17 people. This is his name. This is last known location. Like player driven news, I think would be awesome. Um, because the, you know, again, like when they have cool stories going on, cool. When they don't, like, there's nothing really going on. What are you doing, guys? They keep Galnet moving, you know? And and then you'd have, like, a journalist uh, career, right? I think it should be, like, every player can submit Galnet stories for, like, pure moderation. If they get, um, if the story gets approved by, like, two other random players that apply to be editors or whatever, then Frontier can have final say and push some player stories into the Galnet. And that should be in-game. Like, you should be able to type the article right in game, submit it through Galnet, and then potentially see your story get in the news. And if you have like cool screenshots or like, hey, here's an exploration story I wrote about some system I found, and that gets in the news and enough people uh, see the article and maybe they can like the article or something like that, maybe you get bonus arcs or credits, uh, like royalties from your article, right? Creating like a journalistic uh, or a photographer career path, which I think would be super cool. That'll never happen. Because uh, then everyone would write articles about penises. As I would. Um, so, what do we got here? We got HIP Proto Squid. Okay. So, used ceremonially as well as for stimulant effects, tea remains a beverage with historic roots, and there is a great rival between those who drink tea and those who drink coffee. Oh, wait, that's tea. Never mind. <laughs> so, I was literally like, wait, what? <laughs> what? No, this. Um, although there's no genetic link between the huge creatures of HIP 41181, so like giant squid, cool, and the now extinct squid once found on ancient Earth, boohoo, sorry squid, the evolutionary similarities are mar remarkable. Perhaps they share some ancient spacefaring ancestor. There was much protesting of the use of these animals as food. Claims of sentience still remain high on the agenda for those trying to stamp out the state. So here we have this like super intelligent. HIP proto squid, and we're gonna stuff that into our turducken. So we'll get three squids there. What a cool, like, giant squid, man. And it just makes you think, like, when they add atmospheric planets and you can go down to this planet and see giant squid in the ocean when you go under the waves in your orca or beluga, how cool would that be? Oh my god, like, the sci fi boner inside of me right now is just so erect. We'll repair all our hull damage. Apparently, there's 5,000 of that. That's, that's quite a lot. Okay, and let me just see. I think we're going to do two more systems. Uh, we'll skip the next one because I don't think we need that. But I do want to do that one. And then what's this one? Uh, yeah, we're going to go to Daringas next because we want some truffles. And that's where we get truffles. The hard part of this is going to be after we get all the ingredients, trying to find someone to interdict and give. Ooh, that's really far. Well... It is close to the next destination, though, so... Oh, I... how many jumps? Six jumps! That's nothing. Hopefully it's not, like, 500,000 light years away from the star. As, like, two of the commodities turned out to be. Actually, three of them, and we didn't get the wild... Um, the first one that we were trying to get was, like, wild 
mega fungus or something? Like giant mushrooms? Ooh, a Lion's Crusader. Irve Hogland. I will scan you. Oh, he's from the Flat Galaxy Society. I mean, technically speaking, the galaxy is kind of planar. It is kind of flat-ish. Because of, like, angular momentum and all that stuff. But I don't know, that sounds like... Sounds like Flat Earth Society. <laughs> and now we will run away very quickly because illegal cargo and smuggling. Alright, so six jumps heading to the Duringus system. Um, so, yeah, like that Gala thing, they should let the community get into it a lot more, absolutely. Uh, Gala should have more screenshots, but with maybe bandwidth restrictions. Yeah, like, I mean, reformat the image and put it low res or whatever. I guess, yeah, it is always like, I never think about the technical aspect of like, okay, like there's data moving around, right? So that's probably the challenges they face on their side, right? Um, I find it so hard to remember who the people in Galnet sometimes it makes me sleepy. Yeah, there's a lot of characters in the bubble, and, you know, again, I, I like the fact that there are multiple stories going along, but some of them I'm just totally not interested in. They're just so uninteresting. Like, there was the one today about, like, oh, yeah, Torval and the mining company have split, and there's, like, some corporate adjustments, and uh, the CEO is now this person, and I don't care. I don't care. Like, compared to the Salvation storyline, like, this is just, like, filler. And maybe, hey... Maybe these threads will all link up at some point or another, but it does. It is kind of discouraging when you're like, "Oh, is the, I do like the Joker's deck stories that are going on right now," and that's actually inspiration for my next episode of Elite. Uh, the sort of um, high stakes poker games going on on a you know secret mega ship that is at a different location each time. Cool, like that, and that adds some mystery to the game and some you know possibility that maybe you're in some system and you come across high stakes poker game and you know lose your fleet carrier because you. Uh, well, because you're not good at poker. But I like stuff like that. That adds a little flavor. There was, like, a really cool storyline I liked about an art thief, like a cat burglar, that went nowhere and uh, hasn't been followed up on. But um, I don't mind a little bit of fluff, but just, like, make it interesting. I don't want to hear about poli space politics or corporate mergers. I don't care, like, to hear that, like, oh, there's, like, unrest in this, uh, protests in this system. And then you go there and there's it's not even in a... Oh, damn it, hold on. Oh, interdictions from NPCs. Just an annoyance because they're so easy to escape. There's literally, like, no point to them. Other than to annoy you. And occasionally destroy you when you don't pay attention. There we go. Bye-bye. Um, on Inara, people write up some really cool in-game stories that would be great to add in. Yeah, I found some really cool people on Anara that do, like, space diaries and stuff, and really interesting stories, and I'm like, yeah, give everyone the ability to publish a blog in game, I don't know, like, again, it's a third-party tool, I doubt they'll probably allow us to, like, write stories in game, um, but, you know, if I look at a commander's profile, let me, like, download their, their, uh, their blog journals and read what they've been up to, I love reading about other people's stories. It's such a, it could be such a cool aspect of the game. And like, for something that's like Blaze Your Own Trail, we're all just little specks of dust in a giant galaxy-sized thing, like, at least let us write our own stories and, and share it, right? And I, the way I've been doing it is through my Dangus videos, right? Like, and, and, and streams. Is like, hey, this is the story of what I get up to in-game and the different things that I'm thinking. Now, I obviously elaborate and fill in my imagination with stuff, as you should. It's your story anyway, do what you want. But um, it would be nice for the game to kind of canonize that or make it more official or give you the tools to share it right or to discover it as well share and discover maybe just like how you can look up squadrons you can look up like stories right uh player supported galnet now i guess you know the problem or the fear from that might be that people just you know upload pictures of their penis and write about their penis but um so you need like people to moderate it right so i could get why there would be some uh, challenges there, but you know, um, figure it out. I think it would still be cool. It'd be worth the trouble of figuring it out. It would entertain me, that's for sure. Give us some long stuff that we can read or have a computer read to us as we're journeying out into the black on exploration. Uh, yeah, more news doesn't need to be reported each time. Uh, you drink neither, you're for Pepsi. 
funny, splits in motorcycle works means riders who ride recklessly, not respecting rules of the road, and often little to no safety requirements. Or, or it's, it's squids in the motorcycle world. Well, I was thinking more like the Squid Game, which I don't know if you saw that on Netflix, but it was a Korean show about, like, kind of like a battle royale. There was another show that was similar to that, too, recently. But, like, um, guys that sign up to a game, and, you know, if you feel the, with the game has deadly consequences. I don't want to spoil it. Really good show. Really, really enjoyed that show. It's super um, trending right now. I watched it and then keep seeing articles about how popular it is, but Squid Game is really cool. I really liked it. Um, strangely enough, though, there's not, like, one squid in it. But if you watch the show, you'll it, it explains it in the first, literally the first scene, what that is. But really cool show. If you haven't seen Squid Game, highly recommend Squid Game. Uh, it's brutal, it's funny, it's cool, it's, uh, it wraps up, it's got a neat story. So many good uh, Korean movies. And shows. Uh, just thinking, uh, they don't have the people to do community stuff, doing a couple stakes a week is all they can muster. Well, I get it, and it's like, well then, but then like, okay, you've got this great community, and there's so many wonderful people in the community. I'm sure I, I'd volunteer to be a, a, a moderator for his stories and just read people's stories and determine whether it's a penis pick. You know, you'd have to see a few space penises, unfortunately, but I will take it if um, it gives us the tools to add more player stories to the game. Or you could just prevent penis picks from being uploaded by only allowing screenshots from in the game. Uh, maybe adding a module for a photography camera that you can equip to your ship, and that's what allows you to upload the photos, right? So. Maybe, I guess you could find something that looks like a penis in space and take a picture of that, but I mean, well, some things just look like a penis. You can't help it. <laughs> you don't have Netflix. Yeah, I mean, Netflix is pretty good. Um, you watch it, Rar BG exclusive? I don't know what that is. Rar BG? Robert Trigger. Yeah, I, I got a TV with a built-in VHS. I'm in the same boat, man. Um, but Netflix uh, is is, I think, pretty good. Amazon Prime is another good one where they've got like a large variety. Like anytime you want to watch a movie or a TV show, it's probably on one or the other. Um, they are worth it in the end, but it depends on if you have time to do that stuff, right? Like I'm getting the point too where I'm just like, eh, I'm, uh, uh, you know, oh, for crying out loud, another interdiction, you bastards. You bastards. Of course, when I'm smuggling, you're going to get all the, uh, all the bounty hunters after you. Escape this vector. Escape vector. Alright. That was a mild inconvenience. Uh, your daughter is mad for Korean TV shows, so it's mad how suddenly is everyone watching K-drama. I think I've always been a huge fan of like Korean movies. I think uh, uh, Korea has a fantastic um, uh, number of directors and, and uh, um, Especially horror movies. Really good horror movies. Um, but yeah, it's cool that people are now getting into it. I mean, this is the, the, the point is, like, as the world becomes more and more um, uh, connected, um, some cultures just have these amazing uh, shows that, you know, you, didn't, you wouldn't hear about 20 years ago because they wouldn't bother, they didn't have a medium to, like, oh, hey, here's the North American market, we have to dub it all in English, we have to release X, Y, and Z. Um... It's not going to get a theatrical release. We're not going to put it out on video because no one's going to buy it. But now with streaming, there's a lot more platforms for you know other countries to then you know dub or, or um, subtitle and you know reach a larger audience. And um, that's what I like about Netflix is Netflix does tend to also have like a lot of um, uh, sort of foreign cinema or foreign shows that um, tend to be unique or or have something cool about them that you know then the Americans will inevitably remake and, and uh, you know, do a shitty job at it. <laughs> like, uh, Death Note is a good example of just, like, a terrible remake of a classic uh, anime or whatever. <clears throat> I love the Death Note um, uh, anime, but uh, that show? Oh my god. Like, don't, don't try to remake things that are already good and then, like, change everything and make them crappy. <laughs> Either remake it, like, exactly as it is, or, like, Change enough that it's just like a whole new thing, right? Oh, oh, ow, ow, ow. 
Okay, landing pad 33, thank you very much. Didn't get scanned, lovely. Alright, let me just land before I read those comments because I am scared to crash. Uh, you love American TV shows? Yeah, again, there's so, so many of them, but uh, definitely should give them a uh, X Files, yeah, X Files is great. I watched like the first season of Prison Break. I really like the actors in that show. I never really got into it past it because I'm like, what are they gonna do? Break out of another prison? Um, allow you to recommend a K movie, uh, Terror Live. Okay, I'll, I'll make a note to remember that. Hold on, let me just put that in the tab. The Terror Live. A newsman discovers he's been rigged with a bomb after his in exclusive interview with the terrorist. That sounds fucking cool. Okay. I'll definitely check that out after. That sounds up my alley. I like good thrillers like that. Um, in my culture, people hate dub stuff. We all use subtitles. I agree. I tend to prefer subtitles over dubbed because you get, like, the original performances. I don't mind dubbing, though. I mean, dubbing, definitely, if I'm, like, doing something else, like making dinner while I'm watching something, and I can't watch subtitles, then I can't watch it. Um, and I know a lot of people that just can't do... Uh, subtitles at all, right? Um, personally, I prefer subtitles with the original performances because the dubbing actors are never, they never get the performance right. But, I'll watch something if it's dubbed. So, we are here to pick up Duringus Truffles. This is more of a lichen than a fungus that they resemble. They have similar musty flavor to the ancient earth truffles. But the process of metabolizing Duringus's metal-rich rocks leaves trace amounts of metals on its surface which is why Duringus truffles must be shaved in preparation for eating. So some metallic mushrooms, basically. They make you strong like steel. Pick up three of those truffles. Okay, and we're gonna go, well, hold on, do we wanna go to, yes, we have to go to Mokojig next. Do we have to go to Sanuma? Uh, we can go either or. I think we'll go to Mokojig next, okay. And this will, I think, be the last stop. I was gonna go to also, Irukama, and what was I going to get there? Giant Irukama snails, some escargot. However, um, I think we have a good appetizer in the caviar. So we will head to Mokojing, and here we're going to pick up something called Beast Feast. <laughs> and then after that, we will go try and find someone to uh, give a lovely Thanksgiving dinner to. Hopefully they don't blow us up. Uh, that's how you pick up English. You don't even have a degree. English is a damn hard language to learn, I think. For, like, I don't know. I, I grew up with it, but I still struggle with a lot of... There's a lot of stuff that you just have to, like, know in English. Like, there's no rules, and it steals from so many different languages that, like, it's never consistent. And oops, oops, okay. Yeah, ow. A little bump on the noggin. No big deal. So we are, what? Three jumps to Mokojing. The Mokojing system. I don't know. Where do you guys recommend that we go to try and find people to give uh, this uh, Thanksgiving booty to? I was thinking like Shinrata, just because there's usually people there, but then they're all elite, elitist bastards. Are there other popular systems that we're likely to find uh, players in open? Oh, Tukosa, you're trying to learn Korean with your daughter. Lots of new letters to read. I'd love to learn Korean. I'd love to go to Korea one day. I think that would be high up on my list. I'd like to go to Korea. I'd like to go to Thailand man, for the food, man. I love Korean food. I love Thai food. And I'm just, I would just go, I would love to go to like Korea, spend a month there, and then just come back 300 pounds heavier. Oh my God. Like the stream, talk about food this entire time. And I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna die of hunger. I don't want to eat something right after this. Let's just take inventory. Let's see here. We have our master chefs working in the back to prepare this meal. They're working with some Duringa truffles, which will be a nice little like side of like, you know, some sort of like, uh, what do you call it? Sauteed mushrooms almost. We got some caviar as a lovely fancy avatar. HIP proto squid stuffed into sete rabbits and given with a little terrich spice. And some Saxon wine to pair with the meal, so it's looking pretty good. We just need, I think, one more, one more addition to the meal, and then we've got a proper Thanksgiving feast. Unless every English actor called Matt Mercer or Troy Baker, I'm sticking with subs. <laughs> are those? Are the? I don't know who Matt Mercer or Troy Baker are. are they are they particularly good um, uh, dubbers? 
like overdubbers. Is that like a is that like a career path where you're just like really good at like dubbing? No, I mean look, dubbing. Um, I, I, I watched the German show called Dark, and if you haven't seen the German show called Dark, that is a fantastic show. It's a lovely little uh, time travel. Oh, there you go. Zekhaus literally talking about Dark right there. Dark, the Netflix show with German. I loved Dark. It was such a good show. I was so impressed with it. It's up there with my favorites. I watched it dubbed, and at first it was really bizarre, but you eventually get used to it. Um, I do feel like, yeah, if I rewatched it, I'd probably want to try subtitles, because again, I, I hate missing the original performance. The, the, like the actors, even if you don't understand what they're saying, you feel the emotion or um, in, in, intonations uh, of their performance, right? And it just, it never translates with dubbing. Been making tituk baki with uh, my daughter, and she likes it a lot. I don't know what that is, but I want to eat it. It sounds good. I could use a beep and bap right now. Uh, okay, and we are here. And what station are we going to? Noli Terminal. Noli, Noli, Noli. Are you at Noli? Please don't be 500,000. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's going to be there, isn't it? Yep. This again. Holy crap. How badly do we need this? Um, I kind of feel like... We could... I want this Beast Feast, though. God damn it! Another one! This is the problem with the rare goods, okay? Okay, fine. This is gonna make... The Dark Heavy was right. This is gonna take three hours. <laughs> he called it. Dark? Dark Heavy 8? If Dark Heavy 8 hasn't watched the show Dark, he should, because it is a great show. If you like time travel, um, it's like, I don't want to spoil it, but it's like, it's really an interesting exploration of time travel and time loops and whatever. Um, yeah, the third season, like, I think it, it still tied up everything really neatly, I thought. Uh, but overall, I just, I love the concept, I love the characters, I love how it's like an ensemble cast and there's like different stories within it. I don't want to spoil anything, because really, I just came out of the blue. I just got, kind of put it on, kept seeing it, kept seeing it up, up there. I'm like, one day I'm like, oh, let me watch it, not knowing anything about it. And um, I was kind of hooked in the first episode, but I am like, anything that is time travel related, I will watch. So if you stumble on something and it turns out to be time travel related, it's like, oh, wow. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good show. Um, your wife just watched all three seasons. She sits gasping on her headphones all night. It is kind of like a revelationary show where there's a lot of, like, twists and turns where, oh, wow, oh, wow. Definitely worth a watch. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I watched Squid Game recently. I'm trying to think of, like, what else. I watched the What If, the Marvel What Ifs. Uh, that was pretty cool. I, it was very hit or miss for me. Like, I didn't like every single episode, everything that they did with it, but uh, appreciated it and had fun watching it, so that was cool. <coughs> uh, what was the other one um, that I've been watching? Oh, the first two episodes of Foundation. I think there's two more episodes out right now. Uh, episodes, it's up to, like, episode four, I think. If you haven't read the, the Foundation books, I think it's what, Arthur C. Clarke, right? Um, or is it Isaac Asimov? I can't remember. But, yeah, I think it's Isaac Asimov. But, um, the first two episodes of Foundation were really cool. Uh, it's one of those like stories where it's like, how the hell are you going to make this an interesting movie? And it's very hard sci-fi. Like, I don't think it'll have universal appeal. You'd have to be like into sci-fi to watch it. But hey, uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, so far, first two episodes, there's a really cool sequence that's like a sci-fi action set piece. I don't want to spoil what it is, but I was really impressed by watching it. I was like, wow, that's cool. This is going to take three years to sit back and relax. Pretty much. Pretty much. Well, no, I don't think it'll take that long. I think after Noli Terminal, we're going to go try and hunt someone down. Hopefully we'll find someone. If not, we can just sit there and eat all this lovely food. Hey, you Master Chefs. How you doing back there? Oh, I just feel like... Wait, I could do it on a bio break, but... Maybe... Mm, maybe I should just go to the other place. Like, okay, so here there's something called Mokojing Beast Feast. At Sanuma, I could get decorative meat. So should I stick with this lovely half a million light, light second journey 
and get the beast feast or go for the decorative meat in another system. But the other system could be 500 light seconds away as well. And beast feast just sounds so damn cool because it rhymes. Yeah, foundation is where hard sci-fi, uh, where hard sci-fi books I haven't read them in a long time. Yeah, I think I only read like one of them, and this was like back in high school. But um, it's just one of those things where it's like similar to Dune, where like okay, there's the first Dune book, but then there's like Dune has a whole series, and they happen over like a span of thirty thousand years, right? Hard to make a sequel to a movie where it's like ten thousand years in the future, and you're looking at the descendants of of the original characters. I think Foundation is like that as well, where it just spans this epic amount of time. But, um, you know what? The first two episodes, I was like, this is cool. I'm, I'm, I'm down with hard sci-fi. I know that not everyone is, but if you are into hard sci-fi, I highly recommend Foundation. Uh, it was pretty cool stuff. And also, I really want to see the Dune movie. I'm actually debating, like, after the stream, I'll probably eat. And I'm debating between two things tonight. I want to go see a movie in theaters, now that we can go back to theaters. Get me a bowl of popcorn and eat that munching while sitting in a movie theater with the big old screen. But what do I see? Because right now, I'm torn. You have Denis Villeneuve's Dune, which I'm dying to see. And you have No Time to Die, the uh, sort of uh, Daniel Craig's last Bond movie. I'm a huge sci-fi fan. I'm a huge Bond fan. Love Dune. Love Denis Villeneuve. Love Daniel Craig. Love James Bond. I'm very torn. I'm going to see them both in theaters, but which one do I see tonight? That's the question. And it's, that's a terrible decision. I was like thinking about seeing them both, but then I'm like, the run times between those two movies, I'd be in, in the cinema all day. It's not possible. So I have to pick. So I don't know, what do you guys think? What, should I see James Bond or should I see uh, Doom? What would you go, what would you do? I'd be curious to know. Both of them I think will be amazing cinematic experiences that need to be like big screen because Dune is gonna be so visual, giant sandworms sweeping Denis Villeneuve's cinematography, simplistic and beautiful shots. And then No Time to Die is a big, bombastic James Bond action film, right? It's like, they both need to be experienced on that big screen. But which one do I see first? Dune or Bond? Momus Bog Spaniel sound cool. What the hell is Momus Bog Spaniel? Is that like a different, very good? Yo, pick us some of that if you got, if you got, if you got a lead on that. You would go for Dune, just for the big screen. See, nah, I'm like... I, like, ugh. It's such a hard debate, because I, I absolutely want to see them both. It's just, which one do I see this weekend? And then I'll try to see the other one maybe in the week or something. I might even just go, like, after work one day. Because I need to see them both so badly. And Dune, I'm like, okay. My thing, my thing about, okay, the, the Daniel Craig one is going to be, it's the last James Bond... It'll have probably a feeling of finality to it. So once you get out, you'll feel like, okay, that James Bond era is over. I'm sure the story will conclude. Whereas Dune is going to be part one of, of a two-part movie. So there's going to be a cliffhanger, right? And so do I want to go see a cliffhanger and then see the Bond movie and get that finality and I'll look back on Dune and go, oh, I want more. Or do I see the Bond one tonight, get that like finality, that closure, and then do Dune and be left kind of salivating? Right? I don't know. It's hard, man. Maybe the David Lynch one flopped hard. Uh, now David is doing weather on YouTube. Is that what David Lynch is up to now, doing weather on YouTube? That's so David Lynch. I love David Lynch. I need to, I've been meaning to rewatch uh, Twin Peaks. I actually never saw the Twin Peaks movie, Fire Walk With Me. Um, I've not still seen that in my life, but I was thinking about rewatching all of Twin Peaks and then uh, watching the, the, um, the Lynch movie. David Lynch is a fun character, very interesting guy. Very artsy. I could see him doing well. How, how many subscribers does David have on his weather channel? <laughs> I also, oh, oh, that's what I was gonna say. I watched um, John Carpenter's The Thing. Uh, that popped up on Netflix as well. And uh, uh, I was, oh man, I haven't seen this movie in like at least a few years. Let me rewatch it. Still holds up. Still a great movie. The thing is fantastic. I remember um, I saw the the. I guess it's not. It's like a pre a prequel. I guess like they did a reboot of the thing, but it's not a reboot. It's actually like the thing opens up with a helicopter chasing two dogs, and they came from the I think the Norwegian base. I think it was the Norwegian base. And uh, uh, 
the prequel or the Dune or uh, sorry, not Dune, um, the Thing remake or reboot or whatever was actually covering that base, the one that sort of discovered the ship and dug them out. So if you kind of watch that movie and then watch the John Carpenter's thing, they kind of flow into each other. The end of the first movie is the beginning of the second one. And I was kind of like, what was the point of that? Like, the movie wasn't different enough from the actual John Carpenter one or any better, because, well, number one, it lacked Kurt Russell, who automatically elevates any movie a few notches. But, like, I was like, I don't, I, I don't feel like it was, like, good enough to be in existence, but it's not really inoffensive. But when you watch the two movies back-to-back, it, it's, not, it's not really that great, because you're kind of like, when you watch the John Carpenter one, now you're getting a lot of, like, repetition. Like, you already know what happened you're seeing the same things over and over again right so i say just watch the john carpenter one because that's an amazing one but um i I enjoy the channel red letter media and they've been doing uh, a few videos recently on john carpenter i think it's part of their halloween theme talking about john carpenter movies and it's really kind of inspired me to go yeah i should do a john carpenter binge um in the mind of madness prince of darkness uh those are i I believe also part of a quote-unquote end of the world trilogy like they're not really with the thing so like the thing prince of darkness and, and in the mind of madness are all uh i guess thematically put in a trilogy like it's like a, a trilogy of similar movies about the end of the world kind of thing my god though um those are three great movies but then as i was going through the red letter media list i'm like yeah i haven't seen the ward um that was a more recent john carpenter movie um i haven't rewatched priest assault on precinct 13 in a long time of course he did the original halloween but uh, man, John Carpenter's a great filmmaker, and I so love his soundtracks. And it's kind of kind of cool because he's now been touring, and I, I missed the opportunity. I didn't hear about it until it was too late and sold out. But John Carpenter is like touring now as a musician and like doing his music and stuff. And I would love to see that guy perform live. So hopefully the next time he's coming to town or a town near me, I can I can uh, get the opportunity. But, man, that, that guy's, like, like you know, genius horror, horror film director. And, well, he does other films as well, but mainly known for horror. But then he, he also composes and writes music, and his music is fantastic. Uh, the soundtrack in The Thing is so great. It's just such a um, minimalistic but, like, effective soundtrack. <laughs> but uh, if you haven't given that movie a rewatch, you know, it is that month. It's Spooktober, you know? Throw on some horror movies. Get yourself in the mood. I'm going to watch probably uh, Cabin in the Woods at some point, too. It's kind of a tongue-in-the-cheek comedy horror movie if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you have not seen it, amazing movie. Definitely recommend. Uh, the first time I saw it, I just remember that it's a what-the-fuck movie. It's definitely a WTF movie where you're like, what is going on here? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. It does something different. So look at this, we've had three damn systems where we've had to travel 500,000 light seconds. Today we're just like, it's basically the Super Cruise cooking stream. <laughs> we're going to talk about food, we're going to go on Super Cruise, we're going to throw together a meal. But uh, after we get this, we are going to try to find another human being out there in the deepest, darkest, dankestness of space. And we will try to um, deliver them a Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving dinner. Okay, but two minutes and 45 seconds, we should be at our destination. That's not too bad. It's not terrible. Yeah, and then Dark and Tom, if you have other rare goods you want to pick up, then, yeah, throw some spice on there. Um, Yeah, I'm just trying to think, like, where would you go to... Where would you go to find people other than Shinrata? I mean, Boran might have people still, even though it's not, like, what it used to be. It might have people. Uh, Dekiat is another one, but I have a feeling that trying to pe- interact people in De- Dekiat, they're going to combat log. Because <laughs> that's the scary place where the gankers go. And I also don't want to get ganked. Uh, Zakao saying, now nah, I was watching someone watching Blair Witch on the bus and you need therapy later. Blair Witch? That's an old school. I remember when I saw Blair Witch, I saw it in theaters with my family. And uh, two people in my family got, like, basically, like, they, they started feeling nauseous because of the shaky cam. Uh, like, we were also sitting way too close to the front. And uh, they, they walked out and then kind of, like, forced me to come with them. So I actually missed the last ten minutes of the film. 
So I never saw the ending, where, and, and if you, I'm not going to spoil it, but the ending is the scariest part or whatever the part that everyone talks about after, right? And it completely ruined the movie for me. I was like, okay, we saw like 45 minutes of people, uh, of the inside of people's noses, and then there was no payoff because I didn't get to see it. Finally watched it later, and it wasn't as effective because obviously, like, time had passed, but... You know, that was impressive that they did that that movie. Um, they made a sequel called Blair Witch 2, and it's like a proper movie in the sense that it's not found footage, and it was really weird and bad, kind of. But also, eh, enjoyable. Enjoyable, bad. Cheesy. Oh, you got some Gawain Dance Dust. Nice to go, so. Just sprinkle a little bit of that on the turducken. Or tur turductopus. Uh, Zakao, you're too weak for anything remotely horror. You can't finish Prometheus. See, yeah, Prometheus isn't really a horror movie, but it does have some scary elements, yeah. Alien definitely is a, is a sci-fi horror. The last ten seconds of Blair Witch is the best bit. See, that's the point. Is like That's like, you go see the Blair Witch and those last ten seconds pay off everything that you've endured through. I mean, look, it's good acting. I appreciate, I love independent film. The fact they made this film for like $125,000 it impresses me in that it was so successful. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's like the greatest horror movie ever. I didn't really enjoy it that much, but kudos to the actors for, you know, carrying that movie. And, and at the time, it was very creative. I like the marketing campaign around it where they tried to make it seem real. Like that was quite um, clever. But then, of course, after Blair Witch, there were all these found footage movies. I remember Cloverfield was the next big one. Which was good, you know, uh, um, a good take on the found footage genre, but with like a Godzilla monster instead of a uh, uh, forest witch. But now it's like they, they pump out a found footage movie every couple of days, you know. Um, and I enjoy them sometimes, but it can get overtired. That's like some people can't eat spicy. Yeah, true enough, right? I mean, I'm a huge horror fan. Uh, horror and sci-fi are the two genres that I love. Typically because you see the most creativity in them, right? Like, within sci-fi, within horror, you're going to see something that shocks you. Because, like, the point of those movies is to really, you know, you got to use your imagination to go show the goriest way someone can die or the scariest thing someone can imagine or the craziest uh, planet or civilization or whatever, right? So sci-fi and horror, I tend to like because you get a lot of, like, wacky creativity, right? Not that I don't, I love drama, I love, like, every genre, there's not, there's no movie I won't watch, but uh, horror and sci-fi tend to be where I really find my groove, like, where I really enjoy um, the ideas and concepts that come from them. And movies like Event Horizon that combine them both, or Alien, that's, like, that's my cup of tea. And, of course, action movies, too. Um, you're atheist, you don't believe in paranormal stuff, but you're just too chicken. Well, I mean, even, I think, like, the interesting thing about horror is, like, I think that deep down, no matter what you believe, there's a part of your brain that's, like, instinctually crafted that has, like, the terror emotion, right? And even if you don't believe in the paranormal, a good horror movie can subconsciously tap into that part of your brain, the part of your brain, that flight or fight mechanism that would be useful for survival, right? A giant... Um, tiger or a, a, a saber-toothed tiger or, or a, a woolly mammoth or some horrible uh, predator is, is chasing you and that terror is what pumps that adrenaline into you that gets the heart moving, right? I think like no matter what you believe a good horror movie taps into that real Lovecraftian dread, right? And to me that's the best horror movies the ones that you know, they don't show the monster they let your imagination fill in the blanks, right? They just tap into that cosmic dread um, those are the movies, like, that's what I like about Event Horizon, is, like, there's so much, um, stuff where you're not seeing it, it's a sound effect, or, or, or a hallucination, or, or something that the character's feeling, or that sense of dread, it's always more scarier than seeing the, the movie monster, right? Then again, you get another movie, like, uh, I think this is another Korean flick, too, um, The Host, where, in the first 15 minutes, the monster just comes out and fucking rampages, and, yeah, well, I don't know if that, but then, like, it's not really a horror movie. There are horror scenes, horrible bits in it, but like, it's intrinsically, I guess, a family drama? I don't know. If you haven't seen The Host, and I'm not talking about, again, American remakes, throw them out. They're, not, they're never good. Watch the, uh, the original version of The Host. I believe it's Korean. It might be Korean. That's a great monster movie. A lot of fun in that one. 
kind of batch of creativity as well. <laughs> You're afraid of your monkey brain. Have you ever fainted before? I've never fainted. No. And I've kind of desensitized my brain. I have watched some of the movies that, like, I... There are movies that I think are great because uh, they elicited strong emotions. I would never recommend them because they'll fuck you up. Um, I've seen things like Martyrs. I've seen a Serbian film. Two Girls, One Cup. That's, not, that's a different... That's not a movie. <laughs> don't, don't Google any of those. Martyrs, I think, was, like, the greatest horror movie I ever saw. I literally felt impacted by that movie for at least a week. I was in, like, a bad mood and just felt horrified. Which is what a horror movie should do, is tap into that. But holy shit. Uh, that movie is impactful. But no, I've never... I've never... I've never fainted. I think there's, like, part of me that wonders, am I, like... Do I have a little bit of... Am I a little bit of a psychopath? It's possible. I have some psychopathic tendencies. But, like... I feel like, uh... I'm like the... You know, if I were... A tr truly, if I were to truly become a full-fledged psychopath, I'd be like a Dexter. Be a psychopath for all the right reasons. Um, that's why 80s horror movies were so good, is they couldn't afford to do the monster, so it was on applied. I agree. That's why, like, I love low-budget horror when they have to be creative, and it's like, okay, we can't afford this, like, crazy movie monster, so we'll just show pieces of it, or, or show the characters' reactions, or whatever. And it is that sense of dread, where, where your imagination is more powerful than any movie budget, right? Like, the movie isn't about how it looks. It's not about how great your special effects budget is. It's not about, like, friggin', like, Avatar level of special effects. Like, your brain knows that that shit ain't real. It's looking at the CGI going, like, I know what's up here. But when the, when you, it's what you don't show. Like, let, let the brain make up its own whatever scares that person and you will be far far more horrified uh another one is cheap hong kong scary movie when i'm a kid what's the name of it do you remember landing pad 23 okay that's 33 that's 23 uh martyrs was awesome oh yeah i think it, it's it's a freaking brilliant movie but that was a pain to watch 45 minutes of basically torture porn it has a point the point is to wear you down as an audience to the point where you are literally like with that person being tortured like you feel sick to your stomach of some of the stuff in that movie it's a horror movie that's the point right but I, I can't I can't recommend that movie because like I, I don't want people to like hate me <laughs> Chris Chandler yeah a Serbian film is what is definitely the most messed up film I've ever seen that one I felt like dirty uh, and grimy after watching that one Another one that I won't recommend, but I fucking loved it. Um, Stalker was cool? I don't know Stalker. I gotta check that one out. Stalker? I know that there's like that video game Stalker. Um, oh wait, you're talking about Stalker the Tarkovsky film? Like the original Russian Tarkov? That's a cool existential sci-fi movie. Yes, I have seen Stalker. And Stalker was very cool. The ending shot too is really awesome. Uh, yeah, that's why most of the most scary stuff is money is money brain. Uh, oh, Money Brain is maybe the name of that movie you thought? There's no God, so people made one. They can't explain why they're, what they're afraid of. Well, that's a whole, that's a whole topic. All right, but let's, let's see. What's, what is this Mocha Jong Beast Feast? So, marketed as the galaxy's most dangerous cereal. So we're probably, we're having cereal at our Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. Uh, with a tagline imploring the consumer to eat it before it eats you. Beast Feast contains trace elements of over 223 combined man-eater species, allowing consumers to eat their way to the top of the food chain. So, essentially, this is... We've, put, we've taken all the most dangerous predators and we've turned them into a delicious breakfast cereal so that you can eat the beast. Brilliant. I love it. Um, let me just get six of those. Yeah, fill it up. And let's see. Now we have our things. Let's look, let's look at our Thanksgiving feast. So... We have three master chefs in the back cooking up this meal for us or putting the ingredients together. We've got truffles uh, as a nice little side dish. We've got caviar as an appetizer, very fancy. We've got the trash spice just to make the whole meal better. And we've got HIP Proto Squid, the Moko Jing Beast Feast cereal, CT rabbits, and Saxon wine to pair with it. What a meal. Who can, how can you go wrong with that? That's brilliant. So I think that's good. Um, so at this point, yeah, now we want to find some unsuspecting person and open 
and we want to basically give them a meal. I wonder, maybe, is there anyone on my friends list that, you know, their private group and in beyond? Okay, well, I think maybe the smartest thing is probably to head back to Shinrata. Because that's probably where we're going to find someone. Another place might be Santu, but that's like a big PvP system. Dekiat and the engineering um, locations could also be good. Oh, look at that, Mokajing. We actually came all the way full circle. We've been all around the bubble today, but we're back in the heart of it. Okay, let's head to Shinrata. Now, of course, we do have illegal cargo, so... And let me... Uh, hold on. While we're doing this, let me... Where is my interdictor? So I'll set that up as a fire group. Now I'm going to try to interdict them and basically interdict someone and then give them a lovely Thanksgiving feast for Canadian Thanksgiving. And then if they want to go sell the goods or eat them themselves, then uh, hey, that is up to you. I just deliver the meals. So we're, what, two jumps away from Shinrata? Lovely. That's nice and neat. Now, if you've ever been reverse pirated before, I've never actually been reverse pirated. I've done it two people. Hold on, I'm being scanned, so I need to uh, silent run here. Heat sink, turn off hot, silent running, and jump. <laughs> you prefer brain-eating amoebas. Oh my god, that shit freaks me out. Like, you can just take a... If you ever find warm water in nature, do not swim in that shit. You get one brain-eating amoeba in your brain, you're dead. Like, there's no cure. You're dead. That's the scariest shit. And, like, I think, like, six people in the U.S. die every ten years of it. It's super rare, but, like, it's 100% fatal. And that is some scary crap that you can just go for a swim and then, like, nine days later you're dead. Because an amoeba ate your brain. There should be a good movie about that. I'm sure there probably is. Uh, is Mars on? He might be streaming. Could be funny. Oh my god, yeah. If Ghost Raft is, is doing stuff in open... Uh, are they? Can someone can someone check? Come back, though. Come back before... <laughs> no, I, love, I love Ghost Raft. Mars, Mars and Sparks are uh, two of my favorite streamers. Well, not streamers. Content creators, I guess. Great guys. Funny games, original German, Eden Lake, The Silent House, Surveillance, all great films with 1K that bad things happen to good people, and sometimes the bad people get away with it. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of though, that's a horror movie, right? In a horror movie, the bad guy can win. That's why I like horror, because like, you can't, it doesn't follow this cookie cutter format where the hero always wins. Like, in, in most cases, the hero dies, right? Or everyone around the hero dies, and they just barely make it out with the skin of their teeth, and their life is ruined, and they're gonna have PTSD for the rest of their days, right? All right, let's see, is there any signals here? Oh, we do have, oh wait, Dark Heavy and Tokoso. Are you guys in the system? Or no, they're just, that's, this is lost content. I guess because you're in my team, it's just putting in there. Uh, okay, well, let's go to Jameson Memorial. Maybe we can get someone at the station. I am worried though that I'll be scanned. Hold on, wait, there's like a yellow thing. Is there any people? Appears not to be. Is that a person? Oh, we got Commander Dulkov here. Commander Dulkov. I switch modes. I don't think I'm going to be able to interdict him because I'm going way too fast. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of a loop. You there, Commander Dukov. I will interdict you for Thanksgiving. Or is it Canadian Thanksgiving celebration? Sibit, please. Where'd he go? I've lost him. There he is. Come on. If you guys get get to Shinrata quickly, just in case this guy doesn't want to gank me, because he does seem to be like pulling circles around me. All right. Please submit. Please submit. 
Excellent. Hello. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving. Wait, where is he? Where'd he go? Where'd he go? Do we like de instance? Well, that's lame. Aww. I guess he uh, figured some way out of it. Maybe there's some strange glitch going on. Well, they just finished screen. Oh, yeah, usually they start at 3 and go to like 5 or something. Okay, we have a. Diamond back, but that's not a commander. Yeah, this guy just like somehow wiped himself off the face of the earth. Maybe combat logged. That's fine, we can find someone else. I didn't think we'd find someone as quickly. I would love to do this to Mars, because I know that Ghost Draft guys would appreciate it. They're quite humorous. I like their sense of humor. So my thought is, okay, like, one is we could just hang around in Super Cruise until someone comes in. And they're either going to come in near the Star or near um, Jameson, which is the Founder's World here. Oh, wait, hold on. Just saw Hollow Dot. There he is. Commander Dilkov is back. I don't know. He seems to be, yeah, he's, like, running circles around me. He's doing something weird here. And now, wait, hold on. Did he just leave a wake signal? Did he just low wake? Is he scared of me? I just want to do things. I'm in an ass scout, man. Okay, let's go in on his low wake. Hopefully, he's going to be there, and he's going to realize that I'm just trying to bring some Thanksgiving. Some Thanksgiving cheer to his life. There's no need to be afraid. And I don't know, why is that showing, like, weird distance markers? Okay. Can you not, like, uh, um, land on a low wake? Is that not possible? They shouldn't allow me to drop out on him at this point. Okay. Wait, hold on. He's back. Uh, where is he? Yeah, Python. Is that him? There we go. Okay. Maybe we can get him this time. Again, it really sucks not having the indicators, because I just have no idea if I'm doing well or not, but, uh... I actually kind of find it's a little bit easier to stay on target without... Wait, what just happened? He broke my target. How did you do that in an interdiction? Something is going on. Do not fear. This is a Thanksgiving feast. I come bearing, no, not beating, beating gifts. Do you have limpets? To collect. Don't run away. What's he doing? Why is he running away? Do not run. I want to regale you with a succulent feast. I hope you enjoy rabbit meat. Okay, just like, stop moving, Dokov. Sure, sure, sure. Please cut engines and prepare for food delivery. <laughs> this is so ridiculous, I love it. Okay, here he is. Let me just get in front of him. Oops, a little bit low. 
Okay, and let's drop him one chef. I will abandon them so that he doesn't get in trouble for them. Abandon one truffle. Some caviar. Some spices. Some HIP proto squid. Mokajang beef beast feast. Saxon wine to go with it. And some Sitai rabbits. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving. Enjoy your feast. Please tip the chef generously. He uh, is genetically modified to cook well. <laughs> so now this guy's got his limpets out and he's uh, taken all those uh, space goodies. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Spread, uh, uh, spread the thanks across uh, the bubble. It's turkey time. At least in Canada. The Americans do theirs next month. But now He's probably like some European guy and he's like, I'm British, I have no idea what the next game even is. Uh, he's not, why are you even picking this stuff up? Say the whole Thanksgiving cruiser. Not hungry. Take the foods. Tokoso is also with the Thanksgiving crew. <laughs> Do not fear. We are here to fill your belly. Wait, what? Is he, is he bugging off? He ran away. What? And he left all that stuff there. All that work and this guy didn't even, this guy just left it, left it on his plates. He left. I can't believe it. Ungrateful bastard. You know what? You know what? No thanks for that guy. And Tokoso, that limpet is looks like it is like uh, trying to uh, uh, break through your hole there. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you guys, if you have collectors, just collect all that stuff. At least you guys can sell it. We'll try one. We'll try to interdict one more person. But what's going on here? <laughs> what's going on, Tokoso? You got like this little weird dance of. Uh, the dance of the cargo canisters. I'm gonna record this because this is just hilarious. Why are the canisters doing this? Like what are they filled with? Ja you know, Jamaican jumping beans, right? Like what is going on, though? That's some weird jumpy physics. It seems like it's getting worse too. Like as time goes on, they're like bashing each other more violently. What was that? Some blow up. Wait, what the hell was that? Is that NPC? Oh god damn it! It's a pirate. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna kill him, mood. This guy's shooting at us already. I don't like this this shooty shooty nonsense. You guys, you started it. Let's kill this guy. Andy Kumin is trying to steal our Thanksgiving feast. Oh, pistol weapons, pistol weapons. 
We can take him on. He's just a Mamba. Versus what? An ass scout and uh Oh, you guys are in pythons, are you? This is what you get for interrupting our Thanksgiving dinner. Now eat missile. These missiles will do quick work. The Mamba is a little bit like you know, a little bit like the FDL, like once you get its shields down, it ain't gonna last long. This is what you get for interrupting our damn Thanksgiving dinner. We were having a good time watching our car cargo canisters bounce and joy as the meal cooked. 600k, not bad, eh? That's what you get. Th that's what you get you mess with Thanksgiving crew here. Yo. Alright, um... Let me just make sure. Am I still recording? Oh, did I not record at all? Uh... Weird, okay. It's not allowing me to record. Okay, my screen cap software is busted. Okay, well, I got illegal cargo, and now we've got system feds in here. So let's 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 get out of here. Let's find a new victim for feast delivery. I'm gonna make sure that this next person doesn't just like walk away with our like we put out a, an entire Thanksgiving feast, and that guy's just like I'm out. I don't care. I don't want your food. What kind of monster does that? We were we were feeding you. There was good wine, good food, truffles, caviar. What is wrong with them? Get Pips to shields. Let's just get her shields back up. I swear, what's gonna happen is the next person's gonna like blow me up and kill me, and it'll be like a Thanksgiving, not a night, not a, not a miracle, but a nightmare. Because the problem is, like, yeah, like, like, I, the, hanging out by Jameson, actually, now that I think about it, it's, like, more likely that people coming into Shinrod are going to land by the star, whereas, like, if they come out of Jameson, they're going to high wake somewhere. So I feel like we might as well just go into the station. That'll save us from having to interdict people. The only problem is we might, uh, get caught for smuggling, but that's fine. We're going to go to Jameson and have... An announcement in the chat asking everyone to I know everyone's so scared of Shinrata. <laughs> everyone just expects to be ganked. Uh, you know, when an actual reverse piracy, when when a Canadian tries to interdict you and feed you a lovely Thanksgiving meal, everyone just runs away. See, gankers and griefers, that's what you've done to this community. You've got everyone on edge. Now no one no one uh, can appreciate a good meal because they just assume everyone's gonna kill you. Okay. We're gonna head into Jameson. Hopefully there's a bunch of people in the station. I will announce in the chat that we are having a Thanksgiving feast. Uh, they should come join us and we'll see if anyone comes out. Of course, what'll probably happen is um, we'll get caught for smuggling and fined <laughs> and killed by the station and banned from Shinrata for life. Just for trying to do something nice for the galactic community. Like it took a while to round up all these rare goods. Like someone's gotta appreciate that effort. I'm not making any money of this. I'm losing money. Ah! Oh! Okay! Okay! It's so apparently in your face. Okay, first thing to check is... Uh, okay, yeah, we got lots of contacts here. We got lots of contacts. Attention, Jameson. Canadian Thanksgiving is now in session. Please join me outside for a feast of feasts oh yeah we got a lot of hollow dots here we got a lot of hollow dots so let's just get a little bit further away from the station that way um security which i don't like is there just like one like is that where is security i don't even see security attention commanders Come outside the station and look for the purple ass scout. We are having a galactic Thanksgiving dinner.
I work very hard to get these slaves to cook a meal for you elite people to enjoy. <laughs> yeah, there's tons of commanders here. Is anyone coming? We can zoom in in camera mode. Oh, the typical Shinrata um, mail slot blockage. Like, I don't think anyone can get out of the mail slot if they wanted to at this point. NPCs are just hogging the gates. Anyone want some turkey time? Only player in open for the last two years had no issues at all. <laughs> You've never played open since you left the newbie zone? I only play in open. And I've been streaming in open every week, and um, it's usually pretty good. Mostly people will run away from you, even if you're trying to feed them. I have all these delicious foods come eat dinner bell is ringing bring collector limpets not lumpets limpets Approach purple asp scout for nom noms. I don't think anyone, like, this is the thing, there's so many people in there, but they're like idling or they're in outfitting or something. Like, how many commanders? We got Clizzy Oil, Hellrond, HyperX, Blackstar, Sid Sailor, J Man 340, Almanar, and then Tokoso. Mitochondria was there, but now it is not. Uh, open is the only way to go. Try system channel. Oh, that's a good idea. And then Batman saying, unless you're grinding mats and don't want to be bothered. That's true. If you are, like, have a specific thing. Attention, Jameson. Canadian now in session. Look for purple ass scout. And I will feed you rare nommies outside Jameson Memorial. Come eat. Yeah, I guess like people don't pay attention to the system or the local chat. Like if they're in the system chat, they're not looking at the local chat, vice versa. It is a little bit confusing, but you know. Approach Asp and you will be given the noms delicious food and wine. <laughs> Nobody's coming. Everyone's like just chilling in there. I mean, look, sometimes I go AFK and leave my shit on for like an hour. Sometimes after the stream, I forget that I'm in Elite and I'll be sitting in like a concourse for a couple hours. And then I'll wonder after, I'm like, oh, I wonder how many people like ran up and were like, is this guy even here? Anyone want it's giving feast? Well, this is kind of disappointing. Oh, wait, hold on. Is this guy coming? He looks like he's moving. Clizzall, come hither. Let me feed you. Let me come a little closer. I'm here. Um, purple ass scout. Okay, let's get a little bit closer. It looks like we have a taker. Okay, there is someone also behind us. What ship? Uh, what is my ship called? Sevil Nebarb. Sevil Nebarb. Oh no, Tukosa lost his rares. 
Okay, let me just drop. I'm gonna drop. Uh, what do I have? Like still three up. Okay, I'm gonna drop a, a rabbit. What was that? Was that another guy? Okay, I'm just gonna start dropping uh, cargo. I still got enough left, and you know what? If these people don't want to eat, I will eat this all myself. I'll eat this delicious meal. Unfortunately, I have no pumpkin pie. Let's throw some beast feast down there. I'm gonna reserve that Saxon wine for myself. Oh, look at that! I'm getting all these fines because I'm jettisoning cargo. The feast begins. Is this the guy? That's him! Yay! Come here, Clissel. Enjoy the nommies. <laughs> Yay! This is so awesome! Yay! We made someone's Thanksgiving! Merry Thanksgiving, nommies! He got no cargo! <laughs> oh my god! And of course he's like, he comes in an eagle and he can't pick any of it up! <laughs> this is like, like, the, everything that can go wrong goes wrong! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> That's funny! We finally get someone to come and enjoy a Thanksgiving feast and then he's like, Oh, yeah, uh, I don't know, cargo. <laughs> oh my god, that's funny! <laughs> Let me see what's going on in the chat here. Uh, Batman said, you roleplayed a new character where you can only beg for commodities to sell on the market. That's actually pretty cool. That's a fun, that is a fun little um, experiment, right? All those canisters are just, yeah, like they're just sitting there. I am racking up fines from dropping these, and this will probably attract pirates at some point or another. What's he doing? He's over there now. Maybe he can't get back in because of the NPC barricade. Come get a Thanksgiving feast. Free rare food for Canadian Space Thanksgiving. <laughs> he, he can't be a noob because we're in Shinrata. Like, he's got to be elite, right? You have to be elite. I mean, I suppose you can still be a noob if you got, like, Exploration Elite or if, like, you got into the game, someone immediately gifted you a bunch of stuff and uh, all of a sudden um, uh, you can get Trade Elite. That's possible. It's certainly possible. I know there's, like, you know, a lot of people that... Uh, aren't like super experienced in the game that have been able to get to elite status. So I wouldn't put it past it, but uh, you know, probably shouldn't be a noob. Unfortunately, these, these goods are gonna expire. So, wait, uh, we want a search and rescue patrol <laughs> grabbing these canisters. Wait, 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 wait. Not for you, search and rescue. Back off! This feast is for the poor commanders. Not your NPC, but... Okay, you know what? I need to defend my... You get out of here. Get out of here. Go. Leave me alone. Oh shit! Oh shit! I thought I was inside the fire zone! Damn it! Well, uh, what are you guys thankful for? <laughs> well, uh, there goes those plans. <laughs> yeah, look at all this cargo lost. That was dumb. I, I sometimes am a little bit too impulsive. Impulsive. Oh no, I lost some bounties and claims. Oh well. And look at that. Off to prison. So, you know what? You go out. You spend some hours collecting rare goods from all over the galaxy. You put together this feast. You sit in front of the most popular station and you ask people, hey, free food, come and get it. And what do you get for your troubles? You get NPCs trying to steal your shit and then you get shot down. You get blown up out of the sky. You know what? I'm thankful that the bubble's gonna burn when the Thargoids come to town because you know what? It deserves to burn with these kind of crime and punishment systems. 
Screw you, humanity. Screw you, Shinrata Desra. But thank you uh, to everyone for, for joining the stream. I am very thankful, um, at least for the participation and for the good spirits. And, uh, uh, you know, thank you to Tokoso and Dark Heavy 8 for joining me on this merry, uh, merry um, uh, endeavor. Uh, I will probably end it here. I think that's a, a good a place as any to end the stream. But, um, yeah, we tried to spread thanks and cheers and joy in the galaxy. And what did we get for it? We got blown up and sent to prison. So let that be a lesson to all you commanders out there. Don't try to be nice. Don't try to, to help people. They will just run away. They will shoot at you. NPC is going to steal your goods. System security is going to stand you. And you're going to end up in, in, in prison with a fine. That's just how the cookie crumbles. But if the effort is all. And I had fun doing it. And uh, thank you guys for joining. And it's been gr great chat today. Went through a lot of different topics, and you know, it's uh, uh, kept me company on those 500 light second uh, um, uh, uh, journeys that we had to take. So <laughs> anyway, that was a fun ending. <laughs> 07 Thomas, um, 07 Zakao, Batman, Loot, Dark Heavy, Tikoso. Everyone else is in the chat. Zakao. Um, definitely have uh, um, a, a great rest of the day. It's a long weekend here in Canada. We'll be eating turkey with the family and all that stuff tomorrow. Um, Zakao, yeah, I I, um, I do stream every Saturday. I kind of try to start between 1 to like 2 p.m., but th today was kind of like a little bit later. Um, but usually around those times, I, I don't know. I, I get, well, let me put this way. You can become a Patreon even for a dollar. You can I'll add you to the Discord, and I, I usually um, announce in the Discord when I'm going. Normally, I try to, like, um, set up the stream, like, at least half an hour before so that people get notifications, but I kind of missed that today because, uh, you know, my eye was all puffy and I was all, like, swollen and putting together everything last minute, but um, I will try to, like, stream pretty regularly and around the same time so that people don't want to check it out. I know seven Chris Chandler. Um, give us a shout-out, we'll join you. Yeah, I mean, if you guys want to join, I always stream and open, so, you know, you see me streaming... You can just jump it open and come join me. Uh, commander name is Spatula007, so, you know, do send a friend request and I'll accept you. Um, you know, I'm rarely in private groups. Open is where it's at. It's the most dangus. I don't mind getting blown up. Although, let me just see here. Like, what is our bank account? 178 million. I'm going to really, I'm going to have to, like, I have to, like, uh, do a money-making stream, I think, next week. Because it's starting, starting to look a little dismal in the bank account. But, anyway. Thank you guys for joining. I will see you all next week. Um, happy Dangus. Stay Dangus. And don't Dangus. Or do Dangus. Do blaze your own Dangus. Oh, so. Peace out. <laughs>